Davis. Present. Mr. Guerra. Present. Ms. Beal. Present. President. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Mr. Winfrey. Present. Ms. Galloway. Present. Mr. Gibbs. Griggs. Present. Sorry. Ms. Worthing. Present. Agenda change. What's, Mr. Garrett. What's that for? 
Um, he's going to discuss the price difference between um, plastic or whatever he calls it and steel as we go into major overhaul on um, infrastructure in the city. Infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's no objection, Brown Janelle, then that agenda change is so made. Um, now, going back to the agenda with that change, let me look at one other thing. We still got new business at the end. Okay, Ms. Worthen, I was going to postpone 1804204 for two weeks, but if you've got something, you may proceed. Oh, okay. Are we going to do the executive section? Oh, I skipped it. Thank you. That's a good point, Lord. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to say that. No, you have the floor. Um, Ms. Wheeler, you and your staff, we have an executive session that I almost skipped over. And uh, I would say right now we'll give you the floor to discuss that. Thank you. The City Attorney's Office requests an executive session for purposes of discussing pending civil litigation. And since um, having an open meeting would have a detrimental effect, we would ask for that in the matter of Lily Harkley versus City of Flint Workers' Comp Case W150029222. I would entertain a motion um, for executive session to the effect of which Ms. Wheeler has asked and put it on the record. I would so entertain moved. a motion. Mr. Garrett. Make a motion. Um, it's been moved. Mr. Uh, Griggs. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we go in executive session for the reasons that um, City Attorney Wheeler stated on the record. That would be the case of Lily. Okay. I'll spell it right, H-A-R-A-K-A-L-Y versus right. the city of Flint. And that's a work and co workers' compensation case. Yes, that's right. And the motion says that discussing it in an open session um, could have a detrimental effect. And so that's been placed on the record, which requires a roll call vote. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, um, Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Felix? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Horton? Yes. The vote is eight. Yes. You are going to go to the second. So we're going into executive session.
seventy-five dollar fee for turn off and, and turn on is just, in my opinion, it's too much. If anybody got an opposing view, anybody feel it should not be, that's a council person <laughs> at this time, Mr. Uh, Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, to me, that's a two-sided coin. Because at this time, the people that are struggling to stay current uh, is already burdened. But anytime the city don't stay solvent with a collection or no teeth to collect, we have to pay a monthly fee at the end of the month. And if we can't make that, we're going to have bigger issues. So I think it <clears throat> makes fundamental sense to keep the current charges that's in place that's already there. Such language as if it's not broke, I wouldn't fix it. Now, it is a burden on the residents uh, <clears throat> when, when they can't make their payment and they get turned off. But I'm sure it's programs to help them. And some people could become, that's a word I'm looking for, where they're always consistently getting cut off and their priorities is out of order. But um, it's not fair for the, the rest of the struggling residents that maintain a consistent bill pay system, but the city got to some kind of way get a grip on the, the money that's out there and there ain't enough residents already to carry the burden that it's already bearing down on the people. So... Anytime you take money out, it's going to fall back in another place on somebody else. Anybody else who haven't spoke got a agreeable position with the motion? Ms. Galloway. I would um, like to know if there's a way that we can get a breakdown of how much revenue is generated specifically from that. Sure. Um, because that way, you know, we have an idea of how much of it, and I mean specifically for turn-ons or turn-off, mm -hmm. separate, so that we can know um, financially. I think that as a as a legislative body with the executive body, we need to look at what can be done to really bring relief to the residents where our water rates are concerned. Um, last year, before the, uh, nope, I'm sorry, yeah, last year, when during the um, original presentation of the 30 year deal, there was supposed to be a water study um, to really look at what our rates are as it relates to other municipalities. And um, that, that rate study never was shown. And so we need to really see what we can do feasibly because if we take away revenue and we don't have a way to, because already you guys, um, revenue sharing has decreased from the state and Flint itself has lost, if I'm not mistaken, about $50 million in the last 10 years where revenue sharing is concerned. But if you take away our stream of revenue, it's going to impact the ability to present services. And we know that we don't want to do that to our constituents. So um, maybe we can look at seeing if that rock water study did actually happen and what the results were. And is there really a way legally to bring relief to the high water rates that would cause less, hopefully less people um, to not be able to pay their bills? Yeah, Mr. Gare, I've been trying to go back and forth and listen to the pro and cons. I don't know what that position was, but I don't know what your position right. is, but I'm willing to listen to you at this time. You got the floor. Yeah. So, yeah, I would be concerned of uh, removing this potential money coming into the system because people do have to go out there and they do have to be paid to shut off that water. So, if you have to remove money from one place, you have to take it from somewhere else. Now, I see that burden to be put back on the residents. However, I do. Uh, I think Ms. Worthing had a good point that was saying that residents should have to, or we should be profiting off of somebody getting their water shut off, but we should be able to at least get enough money so we can afford to send the people out there to do so. Um, so that's my stance on that issue. So I would not be voting uh, in favor of your motion at this time. Um, Ms. Fields, and then I see you, Ms. Griggs. <coughs> I hear what my colleagues are saying, um, but I think given the fact that we're all very aware of the latest study that showed the high poverty rates in the city of Flint, 
uh, and we know already that our water rates are some of the highest in the nation. Um, I would be looking at other ways um, to make this up. And in fact, one of the things we were just handed by the city attorney was now we have a, a permit for filming. You have to pay, suggested here, uh, that you pay a permit for filming in the city, you know, discount for students. Here's another one that we haven't dealt with, and it's in the charter, and it's on page 1314. It's about lobbying, registration, and reporting. And then uh, three under that says, to the extent permitted by law, lobbyists shall register, file reports, and pay fees. So I think, and I think we're unfortunately behind the cue ball here because we should have done this before all these marijuana things came before us. All these people should have been registered as lobbyists, but um, there's a lot of lobbying that goes on in the city of Flint, and I think someone somewhere, and I don't know, I guess I will make a referral to a legislative committee, okay, to look into getting some legislation started. I believe that's the right committee. Um, For what? To uh, require people who lobby okay, uh, to Smith, file Smith, permit and file Can we fees? stick with what's germane to this motion on that particular money item? Well, we we can, but this is part of it because. Well, I'm I'm asking you to. I still want to make that referral because. The money has to be made up. Ms. Fields, and so in my mind, this is one way we can make it up. If you don't stick with what's to this motion, I'm going to politely ruin you out of order. So I'm just saying, stick with this motion because your time on this motion and what's germane to this motion is important. Proceed. I'll make that referral in the legislative committee. Anything else, Ms. Fields, on this? Well, I, I would support this because I think that, you know, I, I understand that our finance director doesn't want to see any money taken away from revenue, and I mean, well understood. But the fact is, our constituents out there are poverty-stricken for the most part. And I think we have to, this would give us an incentive to find different ways to make up those. And with the report coming in about how much money we actually generate every year from that, could be compared against our expense of actually providing that. Because I've seen them turn the water off and on. Basically, somebody goes out there with this tool, boom, that's it. You know, and we're charging them $75 to do that. I mean, that doesn't even take an hour. So, um, I, I would support this and would give us incentive to find creative, innovative ways to make the difference in revenue. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Uh, <clears throat> Are most of our turnoffs caused by stealing water right now? Uh, Mr. Griggs, who are you talking to? I uh, kind of decided to talk to Mr. Benzik. So, Mr. Benzik, I was hoping you would talk to me. Uh, Mr. Benzik, you welcome to have conversations with him through the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, they're just they're generated because they're not paying their bills. So I, I don't know if it's because they're stealing or not. They're just simply not paying the bills. If that makes any sense. Uh, I don't know. I, I, Hold up, Mr. Griggs. What's I your can't. point of information, Ms. Sorry, Ward? Mr. Griggs. I was just interrupting because I just want to make sure you know that my motion was for turn off non-payment so that the only one is for people who are not paying their bills Mr. and their water gets turned off. Mr. Griggs, proceed. You got the floor. Well, people that uh, are using water but are bypassing their meter, or in other words, are stealing it, uh, we should charge them $75 to turn it off. Because I don't think all turnoffs are just for not paying bills. I think paying bills is one of the results of somebody stealing water, or not paying bills is the result of somebody stealing water from the city. Is this correct? Um, Mr. Griggs, um, Ms. Worthen seemed like she might have an answer for you. Thank you. This, um, there if that's all right, if you yield to us, you Yeah, go ahead. There are people stealing the water, but they're paying nothing. And, and we have a separate plan for that. 
Uh, we did talk to Mr. Newsom, and we have things in the work that works that we want to. Uh, Mr. Mays discussed about having oh turn yourself in, and then you'll have to pay the fines, but you won't get criminally pro prosecuted. So we're working on that part, but this is specifically for people who maybe they didn't pay for three months or four months or whatever, and they got their water shut off, and then they have to pay a turnoff fee for seventy-five dollars, and then a turn-on fee for yeah. another seventy-five dollars. That's the only thing we're talking about right now. Well, okay, but there's some people that can't pay the bill, and there's some people that won't pay the bill because they were directed to like a year or so ago by somebody, whoever it was, don't pay your water bills. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm really having trouble with this thing. Uh, Mr. Um, I'm Mr. Um, Griggs, you still got three minutes to no, discuss no, it. No, you I'm, still got time. You can come back a second time okay. if you got time. No, I'm more. done. Miss um, Galloway. I just um, want to make sure that there's an understanding of the difference between the enterprise fund and the fund that you should only break even. And the water fund is not one of those funds. And so there are certain funds and fees Ms. that Gavin, we can... you saying the water fund is not an enterprise fund? No, it is an it enterprise is. fund. I'm saying it's important that we understand the difference. There are some fees that go into the general fund that is only supposed to cover cost. And so you shouldn't be imposing more of a fee than it costs to do the service. The enterprise fee um, fund, which is the water fund, is not that. It is designed to be profitable because it has to make itself survive. It has to... Um, Ms. Galloway. Um, and so... And, and, but I, it's a, the chair if no, you want some no answers. I don't want to but, but, but there, there's some you don't see, okay and, and, and because well there's that. some people on the council that are, are make it seem like that's not the case and so maybe that's something we need to understand because part of why we are here now is because the, the enterprise fund is designed to be profitable because it's responsible for the, the pipes and stuff. Um, the what I don't I can't think of the projects. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Capital, what you Capital improvements, right? And so, but it it, it it has to be profitable to be self-sustaining. Whereas the general fund, and I don't know if I'm butchering. Well, I'm Gallagher. trying. I'm just. I, it, I I just want to. It's important that my colleagues understand that because if the enterprise fund doesn't have the revenue that it needs to have, it's in fact going to be worse on our community than, than possibly trying to relieve them from the shutoff feet, if that makes sense. And so I just want to make sure that in all of our information that we do what is right in all aspects because if we stop that fee, and it, it, it takes away so much revenue that now we find ourselves having to increase an already high water rate, then it, it's going to be like it's counterproductive. I want to say this. According to state law, I wouldn't use the word profit or profitable. Oh, no. The necessary funds in but order to manage the system sorry. would be a right way of Thank saying it. So it's the necessary funds Thank to manage you. the system. We don't do it for profit, when, particularly that. when it comes to work. So that's the only caveat Thank I would Thank you so have. much for helping um, with that. Ms. Fields and Ms. Worthy, I don't know in what order y'all would like to do. Um, I have a question for Mr. Hill. So to you, Mr. Hill through the chair. Uh, proceed. My question is, when somebody moves, let's say, um, I mean, I can rent or own a home, but I decide I'm going to move to somewhere else within the city, do I have to pay a turnoff food uh, fee, fee, fee at my old house and then a turn-on fee at my new house? Ms. Trujillo, yes. can you answer? Yes, you do. That, especially with how much renters move around in this city, that could get pretty costly. Mm -hmm. And there's many landlords that pay those fees for them, too. 
because of that, but they do pay it. And many that don't pay those right. fees. I know right. many oh, yeah. landlords oh, yeah. since see, all see, this see, started. I would love to have that discussion heard a little better. Could you step forward? Yes, they, they do. There is a turnoff fee when you move. There's also a turnoff fee at your new home. Yes. Okay. Well, the motion on the floor is just for um, to eliminate the, the turnoff fee for non payment. Correct. Which of these categories would handle that situation when they move? Just a request to turn off and turn it's on? It's considered a regular turnoff and there's a regular turn off. So when you have it, there's a turn on fee when you come in and apply, just like for a, a homeowner that comes in, there is a connect fee and that's $50. And for the tenants, they have to pay their water deposits, plus their affidavit fee, plus the turn on fee. That does not sound like friendly fees and policies to encourage people to live in the city. Water people, water, water, I mean, that's Those pretty... have been in, in place for years. Well, that's been pretty. That's pretty prohibitive, and you know, Flint isn't number one on best places to live in the U.S. right now. Thank you, Bill. I don't know. I like Flint. <laughs> um, I hear what you're saying. Look like Miss um, Worthy. That you was waiting yeah. to be recognized, Miss Worthy. Um. So. I just want to remind council that we don't have a lot going on for those in need as far as uh, getting uh, help. I've had constituents call so many times and it's a struggle to find help. Uh, the WIN, it's WIN funding, right? Uh, it's like 25 a month for those up to... RAP. 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 Okay. The RAP is $25 a month for uh, those up to 150% poverty level. That's not a lot comparing, you know, compared to the fact that for me and then my two little kids, it's like almost a hundred dollars a month for a water bill. That's still a lot with our fees. And then um, finding other water uh, help is just not as easy. And I'm just going to reiterate, $75 for turn off and $75 for turn on. That's a hundred and fifty dollars for non-payment and whether they just stopped paying their bill or uh, they can't afford it really doesn't matter I don't think we should be making our capital fund improvements off of if someone has a need and uh, you know and they have they're struggling and their water gets turned off and we don't need to make a profit to me hundred fifty dollars for off and on there's got to be profit being made I, I, it can't cost that much to turn it off and then turn it back on. So, uh, I mean, this is just one way. I, I purposely only said, like, for non-payment, although I, I'm really leaning towards, I mean, turning it off and then turning it on when you move in the same city, that's a lot of money. Um, but I wanted to concentrate on one thing to at least give residents a break. And hopefully, water isn't getting shut off all the time. Uh, that would be the best thing, and that's when we go back to water affordability. I think chances are less of water getting turned off if we actually had a water affordability plan uh, in place for residents, but I know we're nowhere near that given our fund and, uh, and, and everything that's going on right now in Flint, but I sure wish we could because other cities have implemented it, and, and I think you would see uh, that non-payment happens the most when Fees are high, especially for their income. I'm just asking for non-payment at this time, $75 off fee. They're still going to turn it on for $75, and I think that would cover both. $75 one shot. Um, Mr. Davis, you recognize you got the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Chairman, I, I would love to be president. Oh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I'm the chairman. But I, I like to say this, and it, it might be kind of off base, but it's kind of on base from what my side, and I know I'm on the private side of, of the community. Uh, here we are again with a lot of, we need a lot of restoration done, whether from AECOM or from the city side, a lot of complaints. Uh, the city got to get some kind of way, it should not operate in the red all the time. Now, I know people on my side of town is very impoverished and cash strapped. But at the same time, I watched the state police 
the seatbelt tickets, the insurance, car insurance, home insurance, the plates, they ain't diminishing them prices. If anything, they increase it. So, how every other municipal or part of government, they stay consistent, but we gonna function as a body when we we afraid to stay consistent because it is assistant programs out here that help if you happen to move or happen to get cut off, it, it's programs available. But when they come to complaining about how and power side of town function, I know I should along with Mr. Councilman May should know best. The stuff that matter the most is car insurance, home insurance, home repair, stuff that's way out of reach to help them sustain themselves. We don't have them compensation. But the water is always have been just like when we said about the water leans. You gotta have a teeth to grab to to hold people accountable so they can stay, give them a reason to stay connected without getting disconnected. We all get in a tight from time to time. But, you know, if, if I know it's a penalty, if I get my wire cut off, I'm going to try to keep it on. Just like a cell phone. You keep your phone on, you you, you you be all right. But the stuff that's really burdening this community, I don't think it's the water. The water is a major catastrophe at, at the state level, but... That insurance and the stuff that really matters that's got people struggling and their cars confiscated is more on the side of the state police that's infesting in the north side to a person or a community that's already hurting. And I'm done. All right, you did that in two minutes and three seconds. Mr. Winfrey, Thank you, you got the Chair. floor. Uh, just briefly, I, I understand what you're saying. And when you look at it from a strictly economic point of view, People who can afford to keep their water on don't ever have to turn off. So when you're talking about revenue and you're looking at it economically, then the revenues will mostly be created from those folks who really are struggling. So now we're creating a pool of revenue for folks that are really struggling. So I understand what you're saying about how we should we should uh, have some kind of relief for them because when I, when I really look at the structure of it, Again, those who are able will keep their water on and won't have to have it turned off. Those who are struggling are the ones who you probably see in the high 80 percentile or more are the ones that are creating all of this revenue. Well, I don't want to see that. Either. I'm really Mr. Thurman's chair. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, don't talk to me in the presence. I'm really one. And you have that right. So um, before Mr. Newsom goes, I wanted to first finish with the council discussion in the middle of the motion. I'm going to grant your uh, request for Mr. Newsom. Ms. Fields, I'm going to ask you the question. Have you spoke once or twice on this motion? Do you recall? I've uh, spoken at least twice on okay, this. But I have a then, point of information. Then. Well, then your point of information is recognized. Proceed. I need to know whether we can amend the Masterpiece Schedule at any time or just once a year. Let me say this, Ms. Fields. Ms. Fields, you talking to me? I know. I'm actually speaking to the attorney. Okay. Well, I'm not going to recognize that right now. I'm going to answer your question as it relates to the Masterpiece Schedule as finance chair. When the Masterpiece Schedule came up, we had a somewhat gentleman's agreement with Mr. Newsom to keep it on the schedule, and we proceeded and we approved it and adopted it with some amendments. And so I think that's where we're at now. So no matter how much it comes up or when it can come up for amendment, my understanding, and I hope this council understands it, and I think that the administration agreed that we've left that part open and we did a um, agreement. Would that be a fair statement, Mr. Newsom? Yes. And so I would answer it that way at this time, and we'll wait to see Ms. Fields if um, something changes. So that was fair, and I hope I've answered you. Mr. Newsom, Mr. Winfrey wants to hear from you, but before I allow it, if you may, um, join us, Mr. Newsom, if you'd like, at the table. I just want to say this. As I listen to the discussion of the pros and cons of this motion, Ms. Galloway made a point, and I want you all to stay open as you hear and look at the members as it relates to the passing or failing of this motion, uh, Ms. Worthy. You still got some options. 
you can table it or move it to legislative. You can move it to governmental ops. You can bring it back up again. You can table it. You can do whatever. But you want to watch and see if it's going to pass. Uh, people change their mind. They got the right to change their mind. But in this discussion, if I'm reading it right, Mr. Garrett might vote no. Mr. Um, Davis might vote no. I might vote no. But I'm pushing for more discussion because Ms. Galloway made a point about gathering data and information and looking at the results of what might happen even with $75 worth of revenue. In saying that, hopefully I save myself a minute or two and I will give the floor at Mr. Winfrey's request to Mr. Newsom. Mr. Newsom, you got the floor. Thank you, Councilman and Council President as well. Um, three things I did want to, want to um, say. I did want to say for the record that, you know, the word profit, we like to avoid profit with the enterprise funds. Cost recovery is, is really what we're looking for. But I think what you're looking for is that there are fees associated, there are fees associated with a service that's provided within the enterprise fund. They are meant to, to provide a service and recover the cost for those services. So I didn't want to. And if I may, mm -hmm. other capital improvements that might exactly. be associated, that's what's been neglected in this city for years as it relates to the revenue. Precisely. So I did want to say that for the record, but I, I know what you were, where, where you're getting at, and you are correct. So the second thing I want to say is, I think it's, a, you know, I, I respect which, which where you're going, Councilwoman Worthing, in terms of the cost of actually twisting the screw to turn the water on and off. I get that. But you also have to understand that when you do um, cost recovery based strictly on the direct cost of that activity, that's a dangerous that's a dangerous game because you also have to look at all the activities holistically that it takes to run the water fund, right? And so as you already know, we're not recovering all the costs comprehensively within the water system, right? So it's to look to look myopically at that one activity is pretty dangerous because then you can say, okay, fine how much you know, Mr. Benzik is going to spend X amount of time doing something that's going to generate so much revenue. Mr. Um, you know, the treasurer, who's also paid uh, indirectly through the water fund, when I, what is she recovering? But then at some point, you got activities that are you got to fully load all those those fee generating activities into your analysis. You can't just look at that one quote unquote revenue generating activity, right? So that's I, I want to caution you on that. Well, Huey. What happens? Well, do you have an analysis? Well, I kind of do because we have a, a look at all the costs and all the, all the um, fees collected and all the costs as part of the adopted budget. And as you know, we're not recovering the costs in the water. Um, and that's why we can do no better than projecting uh, that the water fund continues to lose fund balance, right? We're not recovering costs. And to Mr. Mason's point, very good point, we definitely aren't investing in the system. Because in theory, not only should you be not only should you be recovering your operating costs, your annual operating costs, you should be putting some aside some money for investment. And as you know, the number that we allocated for capital improvements in this last budget that wasn't federally funded or state funded is zero. I can go back to the presentation I gave Nate. Mr. Winfrey, is that satisfying your request? <laughs> I just have one more thing to Okay, but let's hear from Mr. Winfrey because he called you. So when you, when you talk about those, who you, Mr. To, to Mr. Lucy, when, you, when you talk about those uh, costs, are you also talking about he those, can hear you. those security costs from all of those folks who are related to who are associated with that year? Yes. So I'm, that's and exactly. we don't see those. We don't see those. I mean, you know, in theory, the act, again, the act, action of that's just one thing. Ms. Trujillo's office has some costs associated with that because she's got to generate the work order, she's got to collect the bills or identify that the bills weren't collected. So you can't just look at that direct activity. There's so many activities that are codependent that you have to consider. That's why this is such. It's I'm not going to say a dangerous game, but it is a bit more complicated than that. Um, but there's one more thing I do want to kind of, you know, I did, I did prepare a quick and dirty um, view of some of the things that are going on in the water fund, but I'll, I will rel relinquish the kind of... I want to see if he through. He has a question. 
And that's what we're doing with not just presentation at this time. No presentation. Uh, Ms. I didn't bring this slide this time. Ms. Fields wanted the floor, but according to the rules I don't agree with, she done spoke twice. Point of information. Mr. Guerra, what's your point? Does the, um, does the rules speak of special orders as well, or does it speak about the resolution? It's a motion on the floor, so I'm in between motions. But what I, I was going to try to say, what I was going to try to say, I have no problem with Mr. Guerra, because even Miss Worthy wanted to chime back in. I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Mr. Guerra, Mr. Griggs could yield their time to Miss mm -hmm. Fields, Mr. Guerra. Mm -hmm. Point of information. So if Ms. Can we yield time? Yeah, I, I will entertain them. If somebody wants the floor and want to yield time to either one of them, I think it's a fair mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Davis, you just spoke twice as well. Mm -hmm. Point of information. Well, there ain't no point of information. <laughs> but uh, do you, Mr. It's going to have to be a point of information. <laughs> What's your point of information? My point of information is asking the person over the Rules Committee. I suggest we start holding these conversations with less rigid, rigidity. Okay, you of used the point of information. <laughs> okay, the so I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules if this is something y'all want to carry on. If not, I'm going to file a call for the vote. If there's no discussion from anybody who has spoken twice, if nobody wants to yield the floor to Ms. Fields and or Ms. Worthen and or Mr. Davis. Now, I, could, I got another round. Will I yield to him? I'll yield to the first one who asked to get back in, uh, Mr. Winfrey. Chair, I have another round. And you going to yield to who? Ms. Fields? You can't. Who can't do what? Let them rule me out of order if you choose to. Point of order, yeah. that, that is the rule. Uh, if you want me to look it up, I'll look it up. I, I do. Yeah, I'll Okay, so if he, if you, if you just made them yield in the flow and you didn't get a point of order, then this is how I'll rule. I'll rule right or wrong that you can do it. And I was going to allow it. Now, hopefully nobody will appeal that. I'll appeal that because I think it's important to actually have the rules correct. And okay, you then and there's an appeal to the rule of the sheriff if they're a second. That's a fair second. Um, the appeal is whether or not I can allow Mr. Winfrey to yield to Ms. Fields. So Ms. Fields is looking that up. That's the decision I made. Anybody want to speak on that? Other than that, we'll just filibuster and wait for Ms. Fields to find the rule. And once y'all hear the rule, stick with it from now on. Miss Fields, you found something? Well, I think there it talks about this in different places, but it says um, a member cannot make the second speech on the same question so long as a member has not spoken out of desire to support. A member who has spoken twice on a particular question on the same day is exhausted. Is her right to debate that question for the day? A timer will be utilized. No banking of time or division of time for future use is allowed. And then there's something else that talks, yeah, talks that to you, can't give your time over. Okay. Well, let's just vote Reyes, on the appeal and see what the majority want to do. Point What's your point? Are, are you aware that there is no consistency applied to that rule? Well, that let's, we stop, discussed? let's stop there. Let's stop there. I'm going to give you the floor. You don't have to use the point of information. We're in discussion on the motion, so I'm going to give you the floor. You go, go ahead and proceed. Now your point of information is recognized, but Ms. Fields got the floor after your point. Number subsection seven. Seven point one subsection. Okay. Number seven. Your point is taken, so let's let Ms. Fields continue with the floor. Yeah, I think I think that's the one I read. No. Where? Seven point one. Let her, Miss Fields, why are you doing that? Will you give up the floor to Mr. Garrow? Or if you not proceed, you got the floor. Yes, uh, 
I'll, I'll yield because they found a particular place in this. Okay. And let them uh, read that. But actually, I believe no, it's you Ms. Galloway. No, you might not want to yield. Y'all are appealing these yeah. yielding things. But go ahead, uh, Mr. Gary, you got the floor. I wanted to go through you to the to Ms. Wheeler. So the rule. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Ms. Fields still got the floor. She just yields to you. I hear what you want to do. I would like Ms. Wheeler to read the section. She's found it fast. Okay, Ms. Wheeler, you have been requested <laughs> to read something. Ms. Fields, you and Ms. Wheeler has the floor. Okay. Yeah, I think the one that's more clear for um, not um, allocating or donating time, that's in um, 7.1, subsection 7. That's for speakers, like public speakers. Uh, now, there is a section in 7.1 um, subsection 13, um, the one that talks about the two five-minute periods. It also says um, a little bit further, it doesn't say as clear as this part, but it says no banking of time or division of time for future uses allowed. Yeah, that's so, all uh, it's going to, that. that's going to be probably the closest <laughs> council yes. rule on point. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've looked at it. See, when y'all start calling rules, I read them at home for fun in between the have and the have not. So I believe that's the closest you're going to find. But look, maybe I'm wrong. Miss Wheeler was trying to get recognized and she ain't in this um, debate. Miss Fields got the flow. Miss Fields, you're trying to hear from her some more. You and her got the flow still. She didn't jump. Now, I, I don't, I'm not going to take up any more time uh, at the moment about this one, but uh, I think we all know that the rules need to be clarified, and hopefully we'll have a rules committee meeting. Soon. So this is this is what we both know. The chair made a decision that he was going to allow Mr. Winfrey to yield his time to Miss Fields. Miss Fields appealed at Ruben and said that I couldn't allow him to yield that, and so it was properly second. We've had discussion, we've looked at the rules, and so if you vote yes, that means the chair and this council going to allow Mr. Winfrey to yield to Ms. Fields. Now this is president said. Yes it is, because so if you vote yes, then... You can't. You misstated it, Mr. Winfrey. Well, let's see if I misstated it. Y'all just say point of information or point of order, but don't okay. just holler out. Let me point see of if order. I'm, okay. What's you misstated point? the let's question. Let's see. Let's see if I'm a, agree The question with you. was not. Let's okay. see if I'm gonna agree with you. If you vote yes, that means the appeal wins. And so that means so I did mm -hmm. state it wrong. Your yeah. point is well taken mm -hmm. and you are correct. So now I'll restate the motion as we prepare for the vote. If you vote yes, you voting to say that Ms. Fields can't get the floor from Mr. Winfrey. If you vote no, according to what everybody has been to vote on and understand, then you vote that the appeal lose and we will yield time to each other. Um, any more discussion before I call for the vote, Ms. Fields? Yes, you have misstated it. The question was not whether Mr. Winfrey could yield. The question was whether Mr. Winfrey could give his time to speak to another speaker. That's different than yielding the floor. Well, I'm going to stick with what I said. Uh, he said he would yield it. And so I'm going to repeat the motion again. If you vote yes, Ms. Fields win and he can. If you vote no, then we can. Everybody understanding what this motion is? Let's call for the vote. All in favor of the appeal, raise your hand. In favor of the appeal? Yeah. All opposed, raise your hand. Okay, there will be no yielding of time in the middle of motions. That's the only time we're talking about, in the middle of motions. But without it being a motion, We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we will not yield time according to this vote in a motion unless it's appealed and ruled differently the other way. So now we're back to the regular motion. And the only person who has spoke twice is Winfrey, Gara, Griggs, 
Have you? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. And Try me. to make a substitute motion, can we? You can do maybe some of that. We'll see. But right now, we don't know if I'm going to recognize you a right, third right. time. That's but okay. we right now going to recognize Miss President Winfrey. Mr. Chair, I would like to make a substitute motion to postpone this special order. Or yeah, this special order. The motion. This motion for the next finance committee. For the next finance committee meeting. It's been a motion made, Ms. Galloway. Chair, I second that. It's been a motion made and properly second to postpone this. Um, to the next finance committee meeting and look like Ms. Worthing wants to speak on that. Before you proceed, Ms. Worthing, I want y'all to remember all of our actions is by resolution and ordinances. So when you make motions, say do all things necessary or we have to get a resolution together, just keep that in mind on some of our motions. Ms. Worthing, you got the floor. Um, well, I won't discuss what was said. <clears throat> About the postponement, uh, I really would hope that we will vote on it next time because this has been postponed quite a long time. Um, so please, I encourage you to speak with residents who have had their water turned off. I think I get a lot of calls because they've heard me talk about water before and they call me. So I get a lot of, you know, it is, it is sad when someone is... You know, making 700 a month and they get their water turned off or they're have, struggling to pay their water bill and uh, and so I want us to vote next time uh, and, and like Mr. May said I, I can postpone if we did or I can um, you know make substitute motions but there comes a time where we need to a vote and if it fails it fails but at least I tried and others tried to do what we thought was right for our constituents and so those who vote yes, it's on record. Those who vote no, it's on record. It's not threatening. It's just let's vote next time and let's be ready for, for that. Ms. Galloway. Um, Mr. Chair, through you to um, Ms. Trujillo, um, do residents have the ability to be um, on a poverty exemption for water? Ms. Trujillo, you recognize. Um, the poverty exemption is only for their property taxes. The water is no longer um, in place. Okay. Um, maybe to to the chair. Is that something? Well, through you again to Ms. Trujillo. Is that state regulated, or is that something that was on our local level that was in place that we took away that possibly could be legislated again? That was the emergency manager. Yeah. Um, number 11 or something like that, please. I think it was the um, order 11. So yes. when our t when the RTAB or orders were the RTAB resolution, the RTAB went away, excuse me, and the EM orders went away, that one was sunset. That one was what? Sunset. It went away. It was, oh, yeah. So, that, yeah. so if it went away, then we should be going back to what it was before the emergency manager? <clears throat> that would, I mean, that would be a discussion that we would have to have. So can I make a referral through Mr. Chair? to have that discussion on legislative um, committee? Would that be appropriate? That is appropriate to um, ask for the discussion item. And Ms. Fields' earlier um, referral, I would order both of those without objection. Okay. Um, and then um, my second um, just kind of caveat out there is Maybe we can see if we can do something kind of like we did with the, um, when somebody has a leak, that with the leak adjustments, yeah, only because there are some people that legitimately, but there is also some people, like I get a lot of calls to, uh, it's not yeah, we on a motion to postpone. Yeah, okay. right. But Ms. Worthing discussed less vote, and so I just felt like I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, when 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 we were putting out the ten percent plus your thing, I got a lot of calls from people in my ward that said, "Oh, I thought I had extra time." 
So you have people that legitimately can't afford, and then you have people that kind of shuffle around. You know, this is not as, and so just, just that piece of it is there too. Not to, I just want to say, so when we have the discussion, I'll be doing some homework with Huey on my own to find out some information so that when we do come together, I'll be well informed. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Tanea, did you get both referrals? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sorry. Now I'm from President <laughs> of Talking okay, to, to, to Miss Brown, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, Miss Fields. There's something that I think it's very important that we understand based on this conversation, and I don't know if we have to make a referral to legal for this, but it's relevant to this issue and many other issues that will come up. When the EFM orders went away, the key thing is, yeah, those things were sunsetted. Okay, but does that mean what was there originally is still in place? It was, it was done perspectively. Uh, not, not just done to do with this, or not just to do Ms. with Bill, this. who are you talking to? <laughs> Whoever will listen, I guess. <laughs> Your point is, through the chair, I'm going to recognize Ms. Wheeler, but I just do that on purpose because I read that. Ms. Wheeler, you and Ms. Fields continue. Okay, I'm sorry. Your question specifically. I want to know as a point of law whether it's to do with this particular issue, right, the poverty exemption for water or any other issue, how does the law view it since the EFM order, which was like a revision of what existed, do we just go back now to what existed since the EFM orders are now repealed? In every case, or in most cases, or okay. And I know, Miss Wheeler, that the RTAB language basically said the work that the EFMs did, like they changed the ordinance, those stay as is. Right. But the orders, which were different directives, those go away. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to oversimplify it because it, it may not be, but I, I know that the language that came from the uh, state treasurer did have some language in the letter that accompanied the uh, repeal um, that was recommended by the RTAP that said that that happened in a prospective manner, but let me get that specific language for you. Okay, and it would be relevant to specifically at this point in time if we had an ordinance or language that talked about a poverty tax exemption for water <clears throat> fees or relief, do we go back to what was existing prior to the EFM? So, <coughs> are you talking about a motion to postpone? That's what's relevant. Anybody don't want to postpone? Anybody do? Anybody got any views on postponement or not? If not, the chair will take a privilege unless there are some objections. I've seen some movement from what the clerk. Oh, then I was wrong. Then I'm going to call for the point vote. of information. You don't need a point unless you don't want to use your second floor. What's your point of information? I just have a question. Since we're given something else to do with the master fee, are we postponing? All of them, including the new resolution that has been handed to us, or just this issue on the master fee schedule? This just this issue. This motion is to postpone the motion that was on the that floor. Particular she motion. moved okay. um, to um, get rid of the $75 fee for non payment shutoffs. That's the only thing that we um, will I'm be voting to postpone until the next finance committee meeting. Thank you. Any other discussion on that motion? All in favor of postponement signify by saying aye and or raise your hand. Aye. Anybody opposed? So the motion to postpone the next finance committee meeting carries um, on a vote of eight to zero. Okay, so that takes us now off of this special master fee discussion. Any other discussion on it? According to Mr. Gary, it don't. So Mr. Gary has the floor. Uh, while we're on the master resolution, I wanted to make a motion. The master fee special master order. Fee special now. order. I want to make a motion to uh, approve resolution CA 7832018 to send to council. No. 
2019-2019-2020 master fee schedule. The law office charges per the 2018-2019-2019-2020 adopted budget and include a film permit fee. I'll second that. Okay. Add on number one. That's add on number one. So that's the motion that now is on the floor. It's been, in my opinion, properly stated. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Griggs has Second, it's been recognized and second. Now we're in discussion on that particular motion. I've seen hands go up. Look like I've seen Galloway, Fields, Worthing, Davis. Anybody yearning to go first? Ms. Galloway, and uh, then Ms. Fields, and then Ms. Worthing, and Mr. Davis. Through you to whomever can answer, um, about how many have we seen thus far that, that caused us to consider um, doing this amendment to the fee schedule. Ms. Galloway, you asking how many, what, changes or amendments have we No, 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 how many permits, because it says the law office has um, given I'm these without... I think Ms. Wheeler got it. I'm going to recognize Ms. Wheeler to answer you. Um, we had approximately uh, 20 that we processed through. You still got the a, Do you mind time, no, you got it. time frame? Roughly, just is it like it, are we going to see an a, a amendment to the budget, Huey? Is this going to play that much of a? <clears throat> uh, we we oh, have through you through the. Huey. I'm sorry, through yeah. you to the chair to the chair to, to, Mr. to Huey. Yes, sir. Yeah. So so at, you got both of them now. At this time, at this time, we we have we need to explore what that revenue. And we will get back to you obviously once we see similar to what we did with the gun sales in the tonight since we provide that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Miss Fields. Well, when I look at this, and I don't think perhaps if we're lucky uh, or unlucky, I'm not sure which it is, that this there won't be as many companies looking to make films in the city of Flint. I think it's kind of unusual, but with the water crisis, there have been a lot of them that want to make films. That's probably why we've had this many requests. But I'm wondering about this $100 fee. Even though it's stated that this is similar to other municipalities within the state of Michigan, does that, are there additional fees, like when you have to close off the roads and streets, where, you know, uh, people can't park, can't get to what, you know, are, are there more costs associated with this that this $100 is sufficient to cover. Who are you talking to? Um, <laughs> through you, I guess. I don't know, to either Huey or Angela. So Angela, Huey, y'all both I recognize can... whoever can answer the okay, question. Okay, you Okay, so um, the law department, we process these. We prepare the forms, we do the work, and, and we process those. So um, 
what happens is that we want to make sure, one, we know where people are filming, we want to make sure people are, are safe wherever they are. Not everybody is filming specifically about water, but a lot of them, of course, are. Um, so we want to make sure people have um, liability insurance, things in place you know, for, for liability reasons. And um, there could, if we haven't gotten to that stage yet, that's a good question because we may, who knows, maybe, maybe people will come here and start start filming. I mean, I have a lot of hope for Flint. And so um, if we do, then we'll have to also look at perhaps coming back to council again to see about other types of fees because we have a specific list of people that we circulate this through. And one of those are the Flint Police Department uh, because they may be, be uh, need to block something off. So um, we haven't had that happen necessarily yet, but we want to make sure that we go through all the channels within the city to make sure we're working together to, to when we're processing these. But right now we have had had that charge, like so we're, we're processing this internally, and um, it takes our time and resources to do that. And so we want to uh, charge charge for this, and we did look at other municipalities throughout the state. So we had that lower fee too, the one hundred fee, one hundred dollar fee standard. It's not a lot of money, but it's something. And then for students, twenty five dollars. I have an additional question. Well, you still got the floor. You've only used okay. fifty three seconds. I, I, most of new council probably isn't aware, um, but having uh, been a recipient of black grants for twenty years, I uh, was very familiar with the risk assessment. And we used to have a whole department that did risk assessment. And I'm really glad you brought that up because I hadn't even thought of that one. So your law department, do you have you figured out how much it's costing you <clears throat> as a department to do risk assessment and then like for a particular thing like the film permits? No, I don't think we've, we've sat down and put together an analysis of that in the in traditional sense of what you're saying. But those are some of the things that police and other departments help us to assess because, like I said, we process it through, but it may, it may be something that impacts the water department and we need to make sure that water department is involved. We don't want to do these things in the vacuum, so and we want to do it in cooperation. Um, it just works a lot better. But no, we haven't sat down and did that. But the only thing that we have done, which I already mentioned, was that um, we make sure people have um, certificates of liability that they're covered and they're insured, depending on know what it is. But most times everybody freely provides their assurance uh, to us. So. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fields, are you done in that yes, first I am. round? You only used a minute and 13, but <laughs> Angela went 12. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Ms. Worthington, you got the floor. What, uh, who's applying for this exactly? Um, like, uh, is there like a dollar amount associated to what you need to apply if you're doing like a the Blair Witch Project, where you're just like filming in like a, the woods or something. Like, how does this work? So they made a lot of money. I really did. Okay. 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 So you asking the council that question? Uh, the, the law office. Okay. Since they do that. Uh, Ms. Wheeler, okay. you, can you answer that? I mean, right now we just have that one. We have two fees that we're looking to do right now. But I mean, this is something that we could expand on going forward. So. Like I said, we get that one in there who has a large, I mean, I think we had years ago, there was a, um, I forgot his name, but the movie was semi-pro. And they came here and they, mm -hmm. they I don't know how that happened. I don't know, if, you know, maybe who else has some institutional knowledge about actually on the ground and blocking off the, perhaps we get something like that. We'd have to revisit that at the time. Right now, we have these fees, but this is something that we could look to expand upon for a major motion picture right. <laughs> companies. But these are things that we can look at because the states, I mean, they do a lot of different incentives for, for filming and, and things in the state of Michigan. So we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. Ms. did that answer your question? You still got to oh, Yeah, I'd just like to point out that Santino is too young to know what the Blair Witch Project is. Yeah. So. <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> you use six of your seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Davis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Attorney, will I have y'all considered the royalties off of that, or, or because Hollywood just, uh, they no, they exist, they ain't quite. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Hollywood just inquired about Pontiac uh, a couple years ago. They they plan on doing a lot of filming of him. Mm -hmm. So it's but it's royalties tied. I I distribute music. Distribution it's a lot of money to be made if they really jump off on this side of the country, mm -hmm. which they already focused on Michigan. Mm -hmm. But uh, locally, I'm sure it's a different from somebody with a little video camera compared to a commercial film where they're gonna distrib distribu distribute the film mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sell the film. But it's something to really look into. It's a lot of money, a lot of money into film. And they are looking at this region right now for movie making. Miss Weaver. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, I took both of those um, suggestions down, the commercial film and, and, and also royalties. We can certainly look across the state and see what's there. Right. Maybe perhaps we'll be here making another recommendation for, for a master fee schedule that includes other fees like that. Mm -hmm. so. Mr. Davis. Are you still going? Well, I'm done. Just you know, the actors. It's, it, it it just grows from there. That's the basic, but it could get real technical as it goes. I'm done. Thank you. Right, Mr. Um, Gary, you have one to be recognized. Yeah, I was just gonna say I was uh, glad to see this come in front of us because I know that we've had a lot of attention and I think it was Frontline um, mm -hmm. that came and filmed here and the there's a the few that are profiting off the city of Flint. Um, Unfortunately, not the pain and suffering of residents without paying anything to the city. Um, so I think it's important to start looking at making money off that as well. So, fourteen so. seconds, Mr. Griggs, you recognize? Okay. <clears throat> Two councilman mazed, Miss <laughs> Wheeler. Three times in the last four years, there's been short movies made in my business, and. Uh, of course, we charge them cleanup fees. You know, uh, because sometimes they'll, they'll use things that. Uh, well, anyhow, does this include that? Should I, from now on, say you you go to the legal department and get a film permit? I mean, yeah, you should send it to us, please okay. do. Um, but what I'm I'm making a list, and, and this is good because it's getting longer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or other things that we could possibly charge. So I put on here cleanup fees, uh, blocking road. I think somebody mentioned already uh, blocking off roads, things like that. Because these impact other departments, and so their time and resources as, as well. So those are things that we can consult, like with police or whoever. We have to have someone from fire. I don't know, but if so, we can kind of see what fee they would charge if it's for a officer at a certain grade or. Of the time, things like that. Those are things that we can look into. So I'm just adding to the list right now. Point of information. What's your point, sir? So you're saying that applies to uh, private property? Right. You're saying well, the, the city of Flint G3 admission should share to that? Are you um, no, we had a we had a request. Oh, can I? Okay. <laughs> um, we, we did have a question about private property, but what we put on that one, because some of it was private, some of it was public, or you know, open, a city property, uh, what we did was in the request, we put on here, this is you know limited to permissions to our property, because we don't have any jurisdiction over that, and we don't want any liability for it either. Mr. Um, Briggs, who recognized the chair, you still got the floor, you did a point of information, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Um, Miss Galloway. Do we, or through you to, I don't know if it's the attorney or whoever, did the city of Flint profit in any way on the Netflix um, Flint town? Um, do anybody in the room know if Flint profited on Netflix Flint town? Miss Anquila, if you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, just looking at others around the room that may know too, and, and they're shaking their head no as well. I mean, we did agreements to enter in um, for uh, for them to be here, but I don't remember there any, being any any uh, scope that included the city receiving any funds. So that's my recollection. Um, do you know? Um, is it Lieutenant Captain Golden? Captain. Captain. Captain Golden, do you know? I don't believe so, but it was not part of that contract. That the chairman would say we benefited, maybe not financially, but it was some good exposure for me. So we might have benefited <laughs> non-financially, but that 
there were some benefits from my view. Some people might disagree. Is there any more discussion on this motion to send this um, add-on number one, the master fee schedule, as it relates to these permits, to um, council? I think the motion was to send it to council. Is there any more discussion on this? I would just say this. It says, whereas research shows that an average on average, other municipalities charge $100 for film permits and that several offer a discounted rate of $25 to students. Um, anybody on the council, our fees will be, what, $100 and then the $25? Is that what's going on here? Anybody read the details of this change on the master fee schedule? That's an important question. Ms. Wheeler, do you know? I was going to say it's on page 10 of 15. And, uh, page 10 of 15. Yes. Let's look at page 10 of 15 and see what the fee is for this. Okay, it would be $100 and $25. Um, student film permit fee. And so that student film permit fee would mean if I went to Michigan State or Northern, I could qualify as a student. That ain't what it means. Well, we'll find out if I decide to do that. I don't know, but if there's no more discussion on this motion, I'm going to ask for the vote. All in favor of the motion to move resolution or add on number one um, to council signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. That motion passed to move to council. It would be seven to zero. Now, Mr. Gary, is we done with special order master fee schedule? If so, then we did an agenda change. Uh, Peter Dyke, if you want to join us. I think this guy say he has, Mr. Dyke has about a five, six, seven minute um, communications, and I will cut him off. I told him this is a brief introduction. I will cut him off. But let's see what's happening. Miss Galloway. Now, that's what I was trying to understand. So, 180421, is that postponed? Yeah, that's postponed for two weeks. Because uh, you, you kept saying did, I was yeah, considering. Yeah, we said we got a meeting tomorrow, but I would ask that it be postponed yeah. two weeks. Okay, because you And I would ask that the master fee schedule part stay on the agenda and be continually postponed to be wrapped up. And you said 180448 is a postponed too. 448. Um, Suzanne is here now. And so I'm going to ask her a quick question on that. So um, we'll get to that bridge when we cross it. So, Mr. Dyke, I need you, Peter, I need you to identify who you are, where you're from, for the record. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Peter Dyke. I'm with the PE Pipe Alliance. Uh, I live in Virginia, and uh, I've become known to a few people here in town over the last couple of years. Um, have you had conversation with members of the administration? Yes, sir. AECOM? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Benzie? Yes, sir. Are you familiar with this guy? Yep. Y'all done had conversations? Yep. You know what he talks about? Yep. Um, Mr. Uh, Newsom, are you familiar with this guy? I have not had a chance to meet him yet. You kind of know what he talk about? Uh, well, we been to give a little insight to everybody. Miss Galloway, so you have So has he had any him? conversation with counsel? He had conversation with me. With you. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Hayes? On the council. On the council. Uh, no. The mayor? Okay. The mayor at the Flint Water Summit where I spoke and she visited my So school. here go the introduction. Let's get on with it, uh, Peter. The floor is yours. Say what you want to say to administration, representative, council, and the public. Um, you can stand or you can sit, whatever is convenient to you. I prefer to stand here because I'm on the clock and I would like to go fast. Uh, go fast. Go, yeah. Time. This is a quick <clears throat> um, introduction. So now, we might have you back again, but for right now, let's get through this. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, thank you all for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule. I'm a former elected official. I know what agendas and um, large stacks of paper mean to your time. So, um, without further ado, I've spoken at the White House on this topic. 
And my purpose here today is to uh, share what I've learned. I'm a student of municipal water systems throughout the U.S. What I've learned across the country, I speak to 5,000 people a year. Specifically, I'm here to help you with your capital improvement plan and educate you a little bit more about high-density polyethylene pipe. Now, polyethylene pipe is this pipe. I'm going to pass this around. Uh, you are looking at this pipe for the uh, Beardsley project right now. A small segment of that project will include this pipe. I understand. Currently, you have metal pipe in the ground. Uh, two-thirds of pipe in the U.S. in the ground today is metal pipe. But two-thirds of the pipe going in the ground today is plastic pipe. This is one of the two plastic pipes that's being considered. We did 17,000 miles of this last year. This is what you're used to here with metal pipes. After anywhere between 6 and 75 years, that's what happens to them. These are your pipes in town. This is ductile iron, which uh, your staff, quote, unquote, says, ductile iron is the Cadillac of pipes. It may have been in the past, but there's a reason municipalities are going to plastic pipe over time. This is ductile iron wrapped in high-density polyethylene. Why do they do that? Because corrosive action on the soil is minimized when it's coated in a white pipe. Why not just use high-density polyethylene? The co most common failure mechanism of bell and spigot system pipes is failure at the joint with ground movement. We're in Michigan. We have a frost line at about 50 inches. So when that ground moves, those bell and spigot pipes come. This guy from Cornell University did a study on high-density polyethylene pipe. He put my pipe in the middle of it and simulated a seismic event with my pipe running. Why did he do that? Because it can handle an earthquake, it can handle freeze-thaw up here in Michigan. Also, to put a camera inside the pipe, and this is what my pipe looks like when that simulated fault line, and that pipe is on that fault line. This pipe did not fail in that four-foot movement. Think about it. So if you've got minor freeze-thaw, this pipe is not going to fail. So we've got Tom O'Rourke saying that this pipe is good. This guy is 5 feet 10 inches tall. That's 6 inch HDPE pipe that that man is standing next to in a 500-foot roll. It's 10 fusions you don't have to. You can sit, ship it to the job site. This guy didn't get the memo. <clears throat> That's a pipe string. It's a 500-foot pipe string. You just pick it up. That's how flexible it is. That's why your engineering department decided to use high-density polyethylene on the Beardsley job under a creek. Okay. Um, so it's very flexible. And what you do is you take two male ends of pipe and you fuse them together. You clean it, shave it, heat it, fuse it, and you create this monolithic um, pipe through heat fusion. You get that double rollback bead. So it's not voodoo. It's science. It's made here in America. It's very cool. 17,000 miles in U.S. water departments last year. You heard about the Cape Town problem? I mean, Flint had problems. Cape Town almost ran out of water. Three million people without water. The rains came at the last minute. What are they doing? They're running I didn't say polyethylene pipe out to the ocean, sucking water in and desalinating. Ocean cleanup. Anybody pay attention to the garbage patch between L.A. and Honolulu? They just deployed 70 inch HDPE out to the ocean to clean up that single use. The kids in Thailand that were rescued, they brought polyethylene pipe into the caves to suck the water out. They didn't bring PVC, they didn't bring ductile iron, they brought a flexible pipe to save those kids. Google, Apple, Tesla all used polyethylene pipe. A brewery in, May, in uh, Belgium ran a beer mate because the mayor was mad that they were running so many trucks between the bottle and the plant and the brewery. <clears throat> Here's me with the mayor almost two years ago, educating her about polyethylene pipe. You can put it in an open cut, which is what you do with PVC and ductile iron. It's very disturbing to the neighborhood, right? Or you can use it trenchless. So this is uh, a 48-inch polyethylene line going in Miami Beach, or in Miami, day uh, two months ago. This is a 500-foot run we did in 40 minutes. No, 500-foot run we did in 40 minutes. It took two days to fuse up the pipe. That's how quickly that went. That job was done in less than a week. So we're talking in terms of saving money. Trenchless technology is anywhere between 40 and 60 percent the cost of open cut, which is what has been predominantly used in Genesee County and Flint for the last hundred years. Pipe bursting is a fantastic option for open cut, where you have a um, cutter 
that cuts the, cuts the hose pipe, so the pipe that's failing that you want to replace, right? And then you pull in polyethylene right behind it. And this is what that looks like. So here we're going through some cast iron with a cutter head on a thousand foot run. And we're pulling in polyethylene pipe behind it. So we have surgical excavations on both ends of that pipe room. So we're not disturbing the streets. Those people still driving in and out of their neighborhood that day. We can get through uh, cast iron valves. Which pipe, so you've got a lot of valves and repair clamps in the ground, right? That you're concerned about. This is what the pipe bursting looks like. Through a valve. Look at that thing. It just broke it apart. How sick is that? Now you have to know that it's there to have that rig that day, right? So who's using it in the neighborhood? Scores of cities throughout Michigan are using this. Actually, Michigan is the fifth biggest user of polyethylene pipe in the United States. But Flint and Genesee County, they're not big things. Yeah. Yeah, it is being used at a high level throughout other parts of the state. This guy, Todd Zelensic, is the engineer in, in the Aronia. They only use polyethylene pipe and have for the last 13 years. Livonia is a city that has actively adopted the use of high-density polyethylene pipe as the primary product to rehabilitate their aging water infrastructure. In 2005, Livonia started replacing 460 miles of 6-inch through 36-inch water mains. The cast and ductile mains are being replaced have an average service life of 50 years. These lines are leaking, tuberculating, and are negatively affecting flow rates, water quality, causing higher maintenance costs. Uh, locations where you want to provide minimal disturbance. So the best opportunity for us to replace these mains would be through either pipe bursting or directional drilling to the existing mains itself. So that was a clear choice for us to make sure that... Okay, so that's Slavonia. Many other cities in the area are using polyethylene as well. So what does it cost, right? So Livonia's... No, no, no. Oh, okay. Take your pardon. Go ahead. So, you get about a thank you. So here we have... Uh, the most expensive project they did was last year, and it was $212 a foot. Ductile iron and other Bell and Spigot systems generally on open cut are well in excess in this area of over $300 a foot. It's a cost advantage here. So Saginaw Street, that's on the list with AECOM. So imagine doing open cut on Saginaw Street. And you're a retailer you're trying to run a restaurant. Are you going to go there and eat in the middle of construction season? No. You do pipe bursting or drilling through this neighborhood. They can still offer it. That's what open cut looks like in a busy, in a busy neighborhood. I'm going to pass on Miami Beach because I, I don't have any time left. But I have offered this to Mr. Vincic. I've offered it to AECOM. I told the mayor about it. But my industry is going to offer three miles of 12-inch pipe at no charge to the city. And that's about $185,000 value per mile. Uh, you're still going to have to bid it. We're still going to have to get a contractor. Uh, that's for the next construction season, right? So we're these guys are getting ready for the next cycle in 2019, right? And that money's about to become available to the city. But you don't have a blank check, right? So you've got to manage that well. I can help you do that. I'm also offering some of my own budget for engineering. I've got an engineer who's great at Trenchless. Uh, and I also am putting a team together to train 25 of your citizens on fusion and how to be laborers and on a polyethylene job. Because it's a different deal. The concern is your staff, they don't know how to fix it, doesn't break like other materials do, they don't know how to fuse it, we'll train people at no charge to the city. Ms. Galloway, then Ms. Fields. Um, you mentioned that um, Flint and Genesee County are not big fans. Yes, ma'am. Can you elaborate or share? So if you grew up knowing one way to do things, and along comes this industry, $12 billion a year industry, we only have a 10% share. Even though we do 17,000 miles a year, Mr. Binsick didn't grow up using this pipe. He doesn't trust it. He doesn't have experience with it. Maybe, maybe you do. I mean, you speak for yourself, Mr. Binsick. But generally, the reluctance with utilities, Detroit Water, they don't use it. Everybody bought their water from Detroit Water. So if Detroit Water doesn't say, or they don't bless it, you know, not a utility. So it's an experience. Thing. So I have to go around and train engineers, water staff, so that's what I do. And so with the investment that you're willing to make, 
is that your your way of showing that you want to make the investment because you believe in the product? And what is the turnaround time? I want you to do a pilot project. That. Yes, ma'am. I want you to gain experience. Because once you gain experience, you're like, I'm not going back. And I see it every month all over the United States. So, and you all, you talk about the films that are coming to town. There's a lot of attention on Flint. And if Flint embraces it, others may as well. And that's why we're willing to donate you know, a significant amount of product to help seed it and help help you all enjoy the benefits of the product. Uh, but even if we didn't seed it with this gift, um, you're still going to see a significant cost benefit, even if you went to the open market. And the great thing about Michigan, you have a very mature contractor base in this state. So we don't have to train contractors. And if you mentioned Livonia, yes, I think. Yeah. What other municipalities? I can I can share a list with you and staff. I don't, I don't okay. have it in front of me. A lot, a lot like good. scores, 20, 40 okay. counties, water agencies. It's very popular in Michigan. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, number one, do you have a business card? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll maybe give me that before you leave. And number two, has your company... Do you have any type of agreement or relationship with any lobbyist or consultant uh, that is working with you to bring this to the city of Toronto? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, and we are, I'm not at all related with Jan Eagle. Um, I represent. I don't, I don't know who that is, but. Um, Jan Eagle was somebody who was going to donate some pipe early on in the crisis. I think they were from California, but proceed, Ms. Ma'am, I'm paid by these companies to represent the industry. So I have 115 men. I run a trade association, but I'm also the chief educator. And these companies pay my salary to educate people like yourselves about the product and the opportunities. Okay, so so you're an independent consultant? I am. Okay, and so you are actually the consultant, but you've not, there is no local consultant that is being paid to work with you to work with the city. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I forget how we met, but he came to me. We said it met. I'm not getting paid. Mr. Garrett, right now he ain't getting paid. So we'll see what happens, Mr. Garrett and Mr. Griggs. How long have the pipe lines? Hundreds of years. We don't really know. We've been around since 1959. It was developed here at the same time as PVC. Uh, but we dominate every other market other than municipal water. So natural gas distribution, fracking, oil patch, um, mining, landfill, all that is polyethylene pipe. Um, but municipal water has been slow to adopt. Engineers have a fiduciary responsibility. They're not taught this in the colleges. So that's been a slower uptake in this one. So do the care you. Pipe burst, um, you guys go in there and use the plastic or not that way? Uh, there are a variety of ways. Typically, the failure mechanism is an untrained person did a fusion or a third party hits the pipe. So Mr. Binsick has said he's concerned that his staff doesn't know how to fix it, so I'm offering to train them. But direct answer to your question, you can use a metal repair clamp, the same one you use today on ductile or cast iron. But there are also polyethylene-centric ones that are even better than the last longer. Or you cut in a spool piece and fuse either end. So it's a fully fused system. Thank you. Mr. Green. Uh, I assume this totally eliminates any requirement for cathodic protection. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, do you have to have any? I mean, in my experience, all pipes will leak maybe a hundred or two hundred years from now. But do you? So we don't really need any leak protection system where this pipe is installed. No, your only issues are connection to ductile iron. So if you do it, if you do one of these two-mile runs that I'm talking about, we have standard details to connect at either end. We're connecting back to the old ductile iron or the cast iron. So that would be our weakest point. So you may want leak detection there. Um, but the answer is no. With PVC and polyethylene, they both have high C factors for the life of the pipe. And um, their lifetime is much longer than the other pipe. Thank you. Mr. Griggs, the first question you asked was a little over Councilman May, say if you used the word Explain to me, if you will, what you mean. I know I ain't the only one who, who 
didn't know, but I'm gonna act like I am. What was you saying? Well, Y'all was talking that big time. So I'm not asking you. I'm asking. You. <coughs> Here's my electric cart to the metal pipe, and it protects it from corrosion. There's a lot of you can went real deep into that stuff. Why it does, but it does. So you asked him the question, was it? Well, we were at one time discussing cathodic protection. Cathodic. Here, cathodic. Protection. Yeah, C-A-T-H-O-D-I-C. And that means you run a well, use one that. way. Yeah, you run an electricity one direction, a cathode head all the time. But anyhow. Uh, and that does what? It protects it from the metal and corrosion. Okay. It delays the corrosion process. All right. Um, Miss Fields, I'm not going to ask you no big time question. No well, um, through you to Mr. Benzik, um, and also this gentleman here. Mr. Benzik, do you, other than the fact that you don't now know how to repair these, okay, what are your objections to something like this? It looks very interesting. Um, uh, but the other question is, using this type of pipe, can we still do, like we just had our um, uh, the leak detection study, the, uh, I can't think what it's called right now, the flow of water study, water distribution, etc. Are those still done the same way, and is there any other reason you wouldn't want to use this type of product? Well, before you go, Mr. Benzik, we don't wrap this up. Mr. Benzik, respond to Ms. Fields. And Ms. Fields, go back and forth with Mr. Benzik. But keep in mind, I'm glad that y'all allowed this agenda chance, and you can go on it as long as you choose. But um, after this, I'm going to try to wrap it up. But Ms. Fields, you got the floor. Ms. Ben Mr. Benzik, you and Ms. Fields, go back and okay. forth. So, I guess we'll, we'll address the leak detection. Um, typically with iron pipe, you acoustically leak detect it. Um, PVC pipe, concrete pipe, HDPE doesn't respond well to acoustic leak detection. So you actually have to sound through the water column. It's about the only way you, could, you can detect leaks with it. Uh, so you use the water as a medium to, to sound through. Um, the plastic pipe... Uh, we actually have the ability, we have a set of hydrophones that we can use on our correlators uh, to leak detect. We use uh, PVC pipes and repairs quite often. Um, another issue that I have is, so when you when you change directions in the water system, you're gonna, you have to have multiple sets of new tooling, because to, to, you have multiple crews that work on it. Um, and you still have to maintain the old tooling, because you're going to have more of the old tooling for many years to come than you will of the new tooling. So you, 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 you have, when, you, when you make that change, you have, you're going in two directions at the same time. Um, also, I have my concerns about uh, HDPE likes to change length with temperature. Uh, so you can imagine when you connect that to an old rickety cast iron main, there's going to be issues, and we're going to have a lot of connections for a long time until we would be able to change over fully. Um, we also, uh, we currently don't own any fusing equipment to, to fuse it, uh, which, you know, is how you, typically how you tap it. Uh, we would prefer to tap it with a saddle, which I'm sure Mr. Dyke will tell you that you can do that as well. Um, so, I mean, those are the basic concerns. Really, um, I mean, he quoted me a couple of times. He's got a good memory. I haven't talked to him in a while. But, uh, you know, if price wasn't a factor, my opinion is iron pipe, ductile iron pipe is, is the way to go. So it can be a hot tap. Uh, Mr. Green. Hot tap So. Well, I'm sure you've seen our, uh, at least I hope you have, our uh, current uh, wind funding plan for what we plan to do. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that, but uh, some of those are infrastructure projects. I don't know how many of my can't remember are actually pipe infrastructure projects, but I assume we're talking about large infrastructure. We're not talking about household lead uh, connection. Yeah, the Fast Start program is not what we're talking about. That's copper. We can connect to copper. We're talking about mainline replacement for your CIP to address leaks and damaged pipe runs and uh, system efficiency. So we're talking about six inch up to. 36 inch, whatever, 
Okay, and who's in the plan? Mr. Vincent, is there anything in our wind plan currently that would need this type of material or could use this type of material? Uh, it's certainly a viable option. We um, we are going to use it on Kersley. Um, I think actually a portion of what he's offering, we're going to go ahead and use uh, that. That's going to be all HTP. Uh, so not just the river crossing. There's uh, Swartz Creek. We have the bore on directional bore under it, uh, which fusible pipe, whether it's PVC fusible or HDPE, has an advantage when you're going to do trenchless work. Uh, one thing that he failed, I think, to mention is when you do trenchless work, you still have to hook service lines up. So you don't just dig two holes. You're going to dig multiple holes through the street. Um, it's less digging because you're not open trenching it. But when you have a lot of services, you're going to do. A, f a fair amount of digging, it's, it's probably close to just doing the open trench digging. So I mean, it's not, it's not just two excavations. It's two excavations if you don't have any uh, service lines to hook up. Um, it's really slick in that, in that sense. So if you have like a transmission main where nobody's connected to it, there's, there's not anything that comes off of it, you can you know, pull it in with, with just two excavations. Have we done comparative bids on anything that we currently have funding to do? <laughs> with this material versus? Uh, we, so we haven't started our, our bid process yet. Um, actually, um, shortly here, I'm going to bring in front of you guys a, a resolution to accept uh, seven vendors as qualified engineers uh, for projects, uh, much the same way we do it on streets. So it'll, it'll allow us to be a little more nimble with our projects. Um, and then once we will send out um, three, we'll send a uh, request three quotes from three different vendors on a project, whoever's the lowest. We will obviously bring before you guys to issue my contract. Would, would, and I know Mr. Newsom, I don't know if you're still doing purchasing as well, but um, are we making sure that our solicitations are offering the opportunity for expansion of this? Because even choosing seven firms, if they're not familiar with this or not trained in this, I think you might have to add something in the solicitation with if you're considering this, people that are competent and using this kind of technology too, if we ultimately decide this might be a more economical way to go. Yeah, yeah we could put out the RFP in there to, to allow alternate uh, materials in place. We, our, our standard has been for years, uh, class 54 ductile iron, and that's what we've used for, since before I worked here. So that's been the standard uh, that the city used. You know, it's a, it is, in my opinion, the Cadillac of small diameter piping. All right, so I Thank appreciate you. the council agenda change. I hope that that was beneficial for your communications with the city of Flint, Mr. Dyke. I hope all of those who listened picked up something from it. I enjoy hearing the conversation. So, council, for that agenda change, hopefully we did something to communicate and or gain knowledge regardless of what comes out of it. I'll let Mr. Dyke's administration, he's changed, exchanged information with his council. The clerk has a record of his information in part. And so let's go to the special order action plan. I ask that that be on there. I just really wanted to say to um, Ms. Wilcox when I asked that that be on there. When we met during the budget process, we had talked about um, reallocation money, 10000 10000 and it, as it relates specifically to Hassel Brent and Brennan. Those are the concerns that I don't want us to get away from. I also know that we have some additional leftover but we've not really talked about that in detail. I remember a conversation saying that it don't have to come before us, but I'm going to politely ask that, you know, keep us updated. Do we know what's happening with leftover funds now and how much and how they being allocated other than the 10 and 10 that we talked about and what's happening with the 10 and 10? We are still working through uh, the reprogramming availability, and that has not been finalized. Um, we are, there's some exercises that are going on right now in terms of closing out contracts. Contracts. Um, you may know that um, because the contracts did not end until September 30th this year, we are just now closing out some contracts. So until that exercise is completed, 
We don't know exactly how much um, is available, but I will certainly keep you updated and you will see resolutions and, I, and I'll let you know um, in terms of anything else we're working on in the status of the reprogramming, specifically for Brennan and Hasselbrain, that is something that we are moving on right now. We do have some money that we have identified in our public service fund and we're working through that right now. So. Um, that is um, that's potentially an option, but my recollection is that you are looking for facility improvements for Brennan and Hasselbring. Is that correct? Or programming? Um, we haven't really discussed that detail. I'm familiar with the inspections, the senior village money, and some of the improvements that need to be made. But what all I'm interested in is when it gets to the point of the 10 and 10 of leftover block grant money that those allocations. If we need to just further discuss whatever area it comes from, um, it's probably some improvements need to be made at Hassel Prince. They got a roof issue, a uh, couple more issues, but until that lease is signed, we'll see what pot of money we come from. So, in light of what you said, I would ask that 180448 uh, be dropped. Um, Janelle. From the next agenda, I will take Ms. Wilcox at her word as far as the continued communications and particularly that 10 and 10. Anybody got any other discussion on this special one? Ms. Wilcox. May I add one more thing? And this is related to the action plan for this year. Um, and you have all been requested um, to provide names of the CWAC uh, representatives. We are looking to get a jump. Some of you have and some of you have not. And if you have not, I'm asking um, that you provide that to us. We yes. got that on another agenda okay. item. But um, right. go ahead and continue to proceed. Um, Ms. Fields had her hand up, but that is another agenda item, the discussion of the citywide advisory committee. I put it in on Ms. Worth and it's on legislation. And I don't know if you'll be here or be gone, but Ms. Fields, you want to okay. be recognized. I, I just wanted to know that it is on that agenda, and basically uh, part of what we talk about is that ordinance that is being proposed speaks to citywide advisory reviewing all funds, including the appropriate funds. I guess we'll talk about it more in the legislative. Okay, so... Janelle, I'm asking that 180448 be dropped. Um, and Ms. Wilcox, between the President and myself, I would like for that communication to continue to flow. Um, and then we'll take it from there. I'll look at grants and Ms. Winfrey Carter is a close association with you, but based upon this, that we're still finishing up some of those budget agreements and amendments, I would ask that you allow the president and myself to stay posted. Okay, resolutions. I'd like to entertain a motion as it relates to some of these resolutions. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, I would I move that we Move 180389, 180515, 180516, 180517 for council. There's been a motion to move um, four <coughs> resolutions to council. You've given the number. One of them has to do with waste management, a three-year contract, waste management disposal. Um, uh, the other one, a contract, Michigan Department of Transportation, MDOT, resurfacing, Kersley Street, Chevrolet Avenue, the beach. Another one, FY 2019, budget amendment to transfer funds. Um, and it also says HB 4321, I guess that's House Bill, State of Michigan money to local transportation projects. And then budget amendment transfer of funds, police department transfer, police records, motor, mobile data terminal, terminals. Is there a second for that motion, Mr. Garrett? I second that motion. It's been moved and properly second to move these resolutions to council. Was that the motion, Mr. Wynn? Yes, sir. Is there any further discussion on the motion to move these four resolutions to council? 
hearing none, all in favor of moving these resolutions as stated on the record to council signified by saying aye or aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? So that vote would pass six to zero, um, Madam Clerk. Six to zero, these are uh, those resolutions that have been moved to council. Um, discussion items. I've went through some discussion items in detail. Um, the first one, 180508, Miss um, Fields, I'll wait till she show back up. Miss um, Galloway, before I recognize you, you got some duplicates and other stuff, but before I get into that, I better recognize you. What's going on? What's up, Miss Galloway? Thank you, got you sir, because that's a privileged function. Um, you did you realize that you missed the first one, 180442? 180442. No, I don't see that. Oh, do you have the final final? I've got an amended um, oh, oh, maybe budget. I mean, an amended um, agenda. Yeah, on page three after the last. Resolution. Yeah, I see four, four, two. It's, it's, it's on the amended. I didn't have. I wasn't looking at okay. the amended. So amended. So I did see it. And so um, I've just been informed that we uh, we got two more walk-on add-ons. So let's back up. I've just been notified. I could wait till we get under new business. But since we're in resolutions and the add-ons, I'm gonna entertain them. I look at them now if there's no objections. Are we getting both of them at the same time? I'll, I'll, I'll see. Um, I think we're gonna do them serially, one, 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 and then the other one. That's okay. So this resolution, this add-on, what would this be, Miss Brown? Add-on number two. So let's all first identify this paperwork that's just been passed out as add-on number two. It says, by the mayor, resolution to procure services from H2O Utility Services, LLC, to support water service center. The Department of Purchasing and Supplies has solicited a quote for services from H2O Utility Services to supply capacity at the Water Service Center. ASME Local 1600 has provided an agreement to allow H2O to augment capacity in an effort to address the backlog of issues. HT, H2O has the specialized capabilities of being a sole source provider pursuant to City of Flint Orton. 3865 section 18-21.8 Did you say something Miss Galloway? No, Let me finish Please, by yeah. saying yeah. it is resolved that the Department of Purchasing and Supplies is authorized to issue a purchase order in an annual amount not to exceed $157,500 from the above mentioned accounts and that's the part that I had skipped over and you see up there in the contents of the resolution, account 590-50.100-801, and then another one beginning in 591. Um, I put that into the record. Ms. Galloway, you want to be recognized. Well, what, what are they... What, is, what are they doing? He's, I'm all, hold oh, on. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he can do his presentation. I'm, no, you okay. I'm, I, I, I'm I have questions to, after he... Yeah, I pay attention to counsel, but, and then I go to these guys. Mm -hmm. That's just a practice I do. Mr. Newsom, Miss Galloway seem to want to hear. Yeah, so, and, you know, I'll, I I'll, think I'll, not, she might not be the only one. I'll lead the charge if, if, if I say something wrong, Mr. Bissett, correctly. But um, I think you all know that for turn-ons after for restoration of service after um, someone has been shut, uh, shut off, people have been waiting for three days, four days, five days a week um, for capability, for capacity, for them to be able to get the water restored. And so what we're trying to do is increase capacity at the water service center 
um, in order for us to be able to get those things those, those to our schedule. Now, on top of that, I will say that this also, the flip side to that is this will also increase our capacity and turn offs as well. But Where overall, is this money coming from? This money will be coming from, right now, there's money in these individual accounts. Have but we received the $20 million yet? The $20 million has been, well, the grant has been given, and we've been we have amended those purchase orders for those service on placement contracts, contractors to do that work. In fact, you all had that budget amendment two weeks ago, I think. But you Did all any other twenty million go into these count or counts? No. So the way that you can you can prove that the service line replacement um, department ID is file for all. Uh, got 2-1-0 is, is the one, but it's not one of these two. Well, Ms. Galloway still got the floor, mm -hmm. and all I want to know, have you allowed, mm -hmm. and I want to know where is this 157 or up to 157, what accounting is, is it coming from, and was there a surplus in that account as we approved the well, budget? What's going to happen, what's going to happen is, as you know, these are two professional services accounts in these particular departments. Uh, right now what's going to happen is we're going to use this professional services money and bring it up front and then as we go further into the year there might be projects and I can't name the projects off the top of my head there might be projects that we are able to get to that to put it back to put it back so we'll have that discussion about a budget amendment as if we run out so of these people Ms. Galloway so these people will be used to cut water back on Yes. Now, I've got to be honest that they also could be used to, start, to turn water back off. But the overall capacity of these people, plus those that are already in the water servicing, uh, will be used to expedite all that work. But there's right now, there are major delays for everything that's going on. Can you, where, where's the scope? Where's their bid? Where's the bid proposal, the procurement? I, I did not provide it, but I can provide that for you. You but, wanted a special fare. Well, I, I want to say on the record, mm -hmm. if we should not be approving money mm -hmm. without knowing what we're approving. Although I appreciate this, mm -hmm. we should be seeing the scope. Mm -hmm. Prime example, mm -hmm. last week we approved um, the water facility that was supposed to save us $30,000 a year. Yeah. We didn't have the contract. When we had the, got the contract before us, mm -hmm. there was an automatic 3% increase. Yes. Automatic. Mm -hmm. Those are things that well, I can assure you we that should... No, no. no. Only an issue it's not service. that. It's yeah. just because we're doing finances. Like, for me, the first question comes, um, what were the professional services mm -hmm. that allocated this money mm -hmm. when it was placed and approved in the budget mm -hmm. that now we're willing to remove it and do this and find it somewhere else. I want to I wanna know how much is in these accounts mm -hmm. and what were they allocated for. Mm -hmm. Because when we were trying to move money, it was like there was no possibility. Yeah. And now we're looking, and I'm not saying this isn't a good thing, because no, I'm be. tired of people paying same day turn on and getting turn on actually seven days later, but paying the $100 for same day. So I'm okay with that. But what, I, what I'm not, myself, is not comfortable with is not knowing the scope of the service. That's fine. We can so provide, we can do that? We can, we can definitely provide that to you. I can walk you through what was originally put into these accounts. And I can also provide you with the contract. We can and can we see a copy of, because was there a proposal? I mean, so there must have been something put out for them to respond. Uh -huh. You mean the original RFP? Correct. No. Well, what, what we did was we looked at all qualified contractors that could do this in in uh, in the in the area that had experience to do this and there was only one we could find. Now in terms of a in terms of a bid that went out, um, what we did was solicited the specific service. Now we know that this is a sole source because we have worked with this organization in the past. In the past we have been out we only found this one particular bid. But our, do we have the ability to do that without going through the process because even if they end up being the only one. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Are we bypassing our pro our process to um, transparency? Mm -hmm. And even if everybody is way out of line and even if nobody's qualified uh -huh. and this is the only person that bids, uh -huh. how are we 
sharing transparency. So I don't know if I necessarily agree with what you're saying okay. because again, we did this exercise in the past. So so you can give some examples of when we did that in the past. Yes. Okay. I can do that. And and since we're on it. I would like to know who the new Derrick Jones is. I don't mean that disrespectfully. So that's a great question. And the other, I guess there's, is now Derrick's, is there, was there Derrick and someone else? Yes. And now there's two different so people? So technically, let me explain it. I'm glad you asked that question. We have not, because you know that person, if that position, the, the person manager position is not an appointed position, that position has not been filled. What we're working through is whether or not that person is going to have a director title versus a manager title. So who's doing it now? Nobody's doing it now. I'm the person. If you look, my name is the one signing under. Right, person. but the problem, mm -hmm. the problem that I have uh -huh. is, is this your scope? Well, here's my here's my problem. Part of the problem that we are having in administration is whether or not we're allowed to appoint another person, right? Because council is saying that we are limited in the number of people. But, but Huey, I respect that, but that has nothing to do with well, this I mean, position is I, vital, and there I are different steps that, that this, wait a minute, let me finish, and, and there are different I steps. I would say that the charter is saying something oh, more so than council, you'll see who it is, but But even if that's the case, yes. so are we saying that the, because if I'm not mistaken, this person uh -huh. or the position uh -huh. is a skilled detailed position that understands and so that's scary to me uh -huh. well, let me that say you're are, you're the person overseeing it well, because we're dealing with an appointment and or a posting and situation. I understand what you're saying and I will say on the record that I'm not this is the position that we are in because we have it, I think you all know that there are other retirements that are coming in the finance department as well. So trust me when I say I'm not happy about this situation at all. If council feels that there is a, that there is a problem, I'm going to bring that up. But what I'm saying is, in terms of providing this function, we're shorthanded. Right, but I'm just not saying so anything about... Just so y'all know, we have a good discussion with no motion. I'm not opposed oh. to that, but proceed. I, I'm, I'm not saying anything about I'm not happy about Huey. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that the role and the responsibility, and, and we probably need to have a special order because I'm fine with the special order. There's, there's, I'd much rather focus on trying to What was Derek Jones? He was a purchasing manager. Was he appointed or was he a hire? I have to look to the city attorney. I yeah. believe that he was a hire. Through you, okay, so he was a hire. So I have to, and, and, and I'm not. Point of order, point of order. I mean, order. I ain't got to say point of order, <laughs> order. Uh, who got the flow? Miss Galloway? Who you talking to, Mr. Newsom? Well, Is you trying it seems like he wanted to Quill? yield to. Okay, proceed, Miss Quill. I, I just so. Both of us don't misspeak. I just want to make sure that we just check the record to yes. see what it is. Yeah. So just, I think that would be smart. Yeah, Thanks, check the How long has Derek been gone? Uh, he left in April. And I just want to say for the record, I've gotten calls okay, let's about this it. department. No, no, no. About this department mm -hmm. and some of the concerns. And I don't know if it's true or not because mm -hmm. I've never met whoever is operating in that. But I can say that with what you do, you already do a lot. So are you saying that you are the person that opens up the bids now and, and goes to them like Derek did? I want to know who's going to be the person to make a motion on this. I want to make it. Please do. I yield. I yield. I yield for a motion. I respectfully yield for a motion. Yep. Because I want to be timely. And I'm done. Garrett. Mr. Garrett. Yes, sir. Can I make motion to send this to council? It's been moved to send resolution add on number two to resolution to procure services from H2O Utility Service LLC to support wireless services to council, Mr. President. I second that motion. It's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, Ms. Galloway, I'm done. not right now. Nope. You got two rounds. I'm done. Motion okay. is now on the yep. floor. Yep. Um, Ms. Worthy and then Ms. Fields. Okay, I find it. Then you have to be recognized. So you wait. You got Perfect. two rounds. Miss Worthen, I'm sorry. Go ahead, proceed. I find it ironic that this is happening at the same time that I asked for the water shutoff fee to be 
be discontinued because it seems like now we're spending more money. Point of this. information, you mean the water shut off a map? Yeah. Not shut I off. Okay, oh. a map. Why are we shutting off water at such a rate that we can't turn it back on? Miss Warby, I, I guess uh, I missed it. If Here's I said. Miss Miss Worthen, you asking a question is why is we cutting it off at such a rate we can't cut it on and you not asking me. Mr. Newsom, you want to answer that? Go ahead. So I, I do have I just want to answer your question with a question if I may. If we have to have some sort of mechanism to collect on water bills. And so I think you and I had some discussions way back when we ramped up the, the shut offs the shut offs in the first place back in March about previously we had not been even collecting or enforcing the billing. So now we're in a situation where we're trying to do that because in the past, according to what was said during those discussions, quote, we haven't been doing anything, so now why are we doing something now? We're trying to do that. We're, as Mr. Young and um, Arcadis showed you all about a month, month and a half ago, we are in dire straits with the water fund. We have, we are trying to save off any uh, violations of the safety of the water. We, we have major, we have major concerns about our capabilities to be able to operate this water fund in terms of, um, in terms of the, the, the terms of the safety of the water. So what I'm saying here is that we are working hard to make sure that we can keep this water fund solvent. So in theory. And unfortunately, Mr. Trujillo isn't here anymore, but, in, but she and I can walk you through some of the numbers that you see, the increases in terms of millions of dollars that happens when you actually hit the targets for your, for your turnoffs. And again, as Ms. Galloway has already said, when people pay to have their water, to have, have their service <coughs> restored, you're talking, what, a week? A week, week and a half where people don't have water. That is a past issue. So, I guess my only response to you is that this is necessary for the solvency of water funds. I get your point um, about that. And we'll look at the numbers and present that in the next special order whenever that comes up. But don't lose sight of the fact that we have, we all have the responsibility to maintain a safe drinking water distribution system for this city. And we have, we have many entities that have presented to us and told us that we have um, some concerns we need to address. But to your point, again, this is twofold. We need to be able, when people pay to have the water restored, that's the issue. When people pay to have the water restored, they need water. They don't need to wait three, four, five days, ten, ten days. So it's, it's twofold. So I don't lose sight of both of them. Both of them. Um, where are we then with um, Water theft and getting that program. So, good question. I think, unfortunately, this really is not here. But we have talked about at some point when it's, when it's um, a second piece of this, where, um, and I don't want to give, give too much away to my administration to bring to the third to this, but this is kind of the first piece. And the second piece will be that potentially these applications um, will be. So I mean, this is the first step in that process. So we're working very hard. Good for you. Um, through the chair to Mr. Newsom. Okay, how did you arrive at this hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred? <coughs> what we did is we took a mix of turnoffs and turnoffs um, for seven weeks. I'm sorry, for nine weeks. So we hit. I think the number was seventeen thousand five hundred. I have right in front of you. But we had a target of about 70500 per week. Um, and then multiply that through for nine weeks for the rest of the year, considering holidays, we got to that number. Well, our that goal, let me, let me make sure, let me just finish. The goal is to catch up on all the, the turn off and turn on, turn, turn off and turn on for orders. And because we're really behind the eight ball, and we're, uh, there's a huge back, there's a huge, uh, there's a backlog, thank you, huge backlog. Okay, well, you were looking at the fees of turn on, turn off to arrange to come up with 157000 No, we were talking about 
their charges to us. That's what we're saying. Their charges Who's to us. charges? So H2O's charges to us because they're an outsourcer. The thing is, when you think about city employees, those costs have to be low. You have to consider the benefits. You have to consider retirement. You have to consider all, the, all these other factors when you look at the hourly costs for um, city employees. But we were looking at what H2O's charges. They're going to charge you, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, I'm trying to understand what your question you look at. I, I'm trying to figure out from the city side, because yeah. you're taking this, and I have another question, out of both sewer and water fronts. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, I don't understand why, if all they're going to be doing is turning water on and off, mm -hmm. I don't understand why we're taking money out of the sewer fund I can explain that. to pay for that, okay? Mm -hmm. okay, in just a moment. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is this amount that you've decided that you should award them a contract is based on what type of calculation, how much it costs to do that many turn-ons, turn-offs. Right, because what they have, what we've negotiated is a rate that they would charge per address. And how does that compare with what it currently costs us to do this service mm -hmm. using ASME employees? Well, so, so if you're looking at that, again, that's a, that's a bit of a, if I look at the hourly cost, of each of the ASME employees, I have to look at the fully loaded cost. So it's roughly equivalent. It's not quite the equivalent same, but there's one. There's an apples and oranges comparison that you have to understand. Their charging is per address. ASME charges per hour. So if for whatever reason ASME has to go out and do something else, or they get sick or something, we still have to pay that. They're charging per address. So what happens to the ASME employees? that are currently doing this job, are they going to have other duties, the same duties? Well, like I, as you, as I tried to explain the whole point when we wrote this in resolution, there is a backlog of work that the ASME employees are not able to get to, particularly when there is a water main break or some other some emergency that has to happen. That's the whole point. And so we had an agreement with ASME to supplement the capacity that they currently provide because <coughs> they are over capacity with the current workload and there is a backlog that we need to help to fit to fill. Okay, my, my so last question. question. Yes. I, I, yes, I want to answer you real quick to say they're well, going to do exactly what I recognize you, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just saying that her to keep eye on you as you wiggle while she talking. She got the floor. Continue, Miss B. Okay, there's no date on this. So, this 157.5, what length of time does this cover? No it's a fiscal year. Mr. Davis, for the please. So it'll be to the end of the calendar. Until the end of okay. December of this year. Mm -hmm. I think this resolution needs to be postponed until you have that language in the resolution. Special affairs? Why don't we do special affairs? <coughs> uh, that will satisfy me. How about a substitute motion, Mr. Mays? You got the floor. A second that motion. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Um, you out of order. Let me make it there. first. You ain't been recognized. That's not a one, but you out of order. Ms. Fields, continue. I would move to postpone <laughs> this to special affairs to allow for the resolution to include uh, dates and the, the scope and dates of this. I, I also would like... Point of order. Hold up. Oh, you have to wait for the... Are you finished with your motion, Ms. Fields? No. Okay, let's continue with the same motion. The substitute motion would include the resolution including not only the dates, mm -hmm. but a more specific scope of service mm -hmm. for this company, for this company. <coughs> okay, so I want to repeat that. <coughs> Can you say it again, Ms. Fitz? <laughs> Just in general. I'd like to move to offer a substitute motion for this resolution to have some changes made to include the dates of the services and the scope of services provided for this amount of money. And you want to postpone it to special effect? Correct. So it's been a motion made and properly second. Janelle seems to have it. I understand it. Uh, Mr. Garrett? Oh, still confirming my second for that motion. 
you wanted to second that motion. So that motion has been made and properly second. Any discussion on the motion to postpone this resolution to special affairs? Any discussion? Ms. Galloway. So, he, Mr. Uh, Chair to Mr. Huey. Um, so, would it be okay for me to send the questions that I would have before special affairs? Hold up. You? You, um, I'm going to get to you, Rob, but proceed. Go ahead. Any more discussion? Um, One Ms. Question. Fields? Do you anticipate? Do who that anticipate? Mr. Newsom. Sure. <laughs> Do you anticipate that we'll need to, you said this is for to catch up with backlog, that yes. we'll need to continue this after December of 18? We'll explore it and do a cost benefit analysis at that point. Okay. Mr. Benson. And, and if I may, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, you, you didn't answer I my didn't second answer question. Your, your question. Yeah. So, in theory, what happens with the billing for any, any collections, you, the collections are for the water and sewer, because you understand we, on the sewer side, we estimate sewage use, sewer usage based on water. So that, so both are, are coupled together. So that's the reason that we can use both the water and the sewer. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, how do you know how much your sewer is used? It's based on water. And so this is a collection activity or restoration of service. If you don't have water, you can't have sewer, right? So that's the reason that, and this is not a typical for customer service. Customer service also is paid out of water. Well, I think you should be careful when you're wording the scope of service because mm -hmm. I could foresee, mm -hmm. okay, that someone would say, Why water if you use water? So that why is sewer? What does turning water on and off have to do with sewer? So I think you need We can to address that. I mean, typically. In the resolution, yeah. Yeah, we can address that in resolution. I see that. The, I see the need for it. I can see a need for clarification. I think for the most part, uh, when we say water, we most understand it. But with that being said, for documentation purposes, I can make that adjustment as well. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Benzik, I have some type of opportunity here. I've seen you moving around. Others might not have seen you. Is there something you want to add to this conversation? If I could, Mr. Chair, I wanted to answer her question. She, she said how would uh, the AFSCME employees, or what would the AFSCME employees be doing uh, once we had the contractor there? Exactly what they're doing now. So we're not going to affect them in any way. We're just going to provide them with a little bit of help. That, that's, they're that's also what, going to be doing terms. They absolutely are. This we also have to hide. We have to winterize hydrants. It's getting to, unfortunately getting to be that side, that that time of year. And I also want to clarify real quick for Mr. Newsom: we don't estimate sewer usage. We actually calculate sewer usage off of the meter. So just just so you guys, thank know, you. I want to make sure that he doesn't somebody doesn't hang him up on. That. Okay, Mr. Benzik. So I seen you moving, Ms. Fields. If you have something you. further for no. Mr. Benzik or okay. anybody, thank any you. further discussion on this motion? This is a motion to postpone to special affairs, looking for some things specifically in the motion that was made. Janelle, you have that motion recorded. Yes, and is that everybody understand the motion? I've repeated the motion that we don't, Ms. Fields, move to postpone to special affairs. All in favor of the motion? Uh, Ms. Galloway, is it something? I was just saying I have not approved that yet. Beg your pardon? Okay. Um, all in favor of the motion to postpone the special affairs signify by saying aye and or raise your hand. Aye. Anybody opposed? Yeah. Any abstentions? So that vote would pass seven yes and one no. And so we'll see this in special affairs. Okay. So that would be add-on number two or pop back up in special affairs. Any other add-on? Yes. Yes, that one. Yeah, I better get in here at the beginning of the meeting right. when we do them agenda changes right. and give us a new insight. You know we can get hostile, but no problem. Let's keep take care of the business of the people in the city of Flint. So let's see, Ms. Brown, would we be fair to designate this as add-on number three? Yes, so let's designate this as add-on number three. 
And Miss Brown, the other Miss Brown. I see you said that. Let's see what we get in the new business. All right. So add on number three is being designated as a resolution to veto construction for pavement right away restoration services after water service line repair. We might hear from you before new business now that I see this add-on. So this is an add-on resolution for Zito on Finn Road. And it says the Department of Purchases of the Request to have Zito to extend said contract until November 30th, 2018 in order to complete remaining pavement right-of-way repairs, restoration, after water service line repair. And it is resolved that the proper city officials are hereby authorized to enter into a change order number five to the contract with Zito Construction to extend said contract for pavement right-of-way repair restoration services after water service line repair until November 30th, 2018. That's basically what it said. I kind of skipped over some, but that's the resolution that's been designated as add-on number three. Now, I listen to anything anybody got to say. Mr. Benzik has stood, looked like he wanted to be recognized, and so before I entertain a motion, let's see what Mr. Benzik has to say, unless there are some objections. Mr. Benzik, is it something you needed to say, Ms. Brown, first? Yeah, I've got to see a dollar figure someplace. If there's no dollar figure, then it needs to be stated. That's so my question. Know. That's your telling me. Okay, we'll get there. Uh, Mr. Benzik, you've heard that. Council, you've heard that. Any council want to speak before Mr. Benzik? I always pay attention to council first. Mr. Uh, Griggs. Does this include the uh, restorations being done by Goya? Who are you talking to? <laughs> to you to him. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mr. Benzik. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chair. This, this has nothing to do with go ahead. So this is simply a change in date on the contract for Zito. We had thought Zito Construction was done with the restoration um, in the process of driving around and kind of punch listing things. We noticed there were some, some stuff that they had missed. So we just want to extend their contract date. There's no financial implication. If, if you look at the second page, it's not an, an addition in finance or finances or anything. It's just simply an extension of the date on their contract. Yes. Mr. Griggs, yes. you still got the floor. You, you no, can. I'm done. Thank you. Mr. Guerra. I was going to make a motion that we send this to council. Um, it's been a motion made to send this resolution add-on three to council. I'll second that. Mr. Griggs. <coughs> Mr. Griggs. Yeah. Huh? Now you second it. Yeah. Um, you had to be recognized first. So, Mr. Griggs, you're going to second the motion. It's been moved and properly second to send add-on number three to council discussion. Ms. Fields, I might have missed it. I might have missed it. You think you were first. I'm going to recognize her. I come back to you. Okay. Then, Mr. Davis. Okay. Through the chair to Mr. Benzik. Mr. Benzik. Number one, the city still has, the last time I saw, ASPE has a million dollars left in the budget for them to do restoration. Is that correct? Yep. Have they made any progress on that million dollars? Absolutely. They're, they're working every day on restorations. Okay. I have no problem with, and I don't know if the city has a contract per se, if they need theirs extended for whatever reason, but I have to tell you, Mr. Benzik, I am not at all happy, and my constituents are not at all happy with the quality of road restoration that's going on. If you just look on the street I live on, there's like, it goes down, it goes, I mean, even, I'm talking about where they've restored it. You know, it's like speed bumps here, and valleys there, and nowhere is it like smooth with the road. So I don't know what the process is, but I had been meaning to ask you, 
do you go out and inspect these roads and streets after they've been restored to make sure that they meet some basic elemental, like they're flat, like a road should be flat? I personally don't, but the street department does. So if, if you have issues, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to try and look into those and see, see what we can do about it. Um, quite frankly, they should be doing good work, but in a lot of cases, the roads weren't real good before we started. No, I'm not talking about where it was a pothole. I'm talking about where they dug in, there's a square, and either they did it before, now it's fallen in, or they're doing it now and it's fallen in, or they put it and it's a bump. In fact, uh, I had some 7th Ward residents tell me that they went down Court Street and it was, they thought Court Street had put speed bumps in because they were so bad. Quite, quite frankly, Court Street didn't, didn't turn out very well. That was the answer. Well, I would like to see some more oversight, if possible, from the DPW director to the streets department. And I invite you to call me anytime, and I'll take you down some streets. And I don't think you'll be very happy with the quality of the restoration. Uh, I'm certainly open to that. If uh, if you believe they need more oversight, I'm I'm happy to provide it for them. Thank you. This feels you'll be maybe you don't want to indicate moving this resolution to council. That's the motion, uh, Miss Galloway. Uh, Mr. Bit. Through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Benzik. Mr. Benzik, you did you personally drive? I mean, what made you guys drive through for Zito Construction? Before uh, you answer, I'm going to end up getting to Ms. Brown, but proceed. Go ahead, if I Mr. Um, so, as part of um, just not just the, the Zito areas, but the city areas, we're just we're doing a, a final check to make sure that stuff is done. That's what that's what we're doing. So. Um, we have we have our inspectors driving and looking and when there's stuff not restored we look into why it's not restored is it is it some of ours is it a consumer's issue um, etc and then if we determine that it's something that we should be um, restoring as part of the service line replacement then you know we assign it to the proper person and the reason why I'm asking Mr. Benzik is because as you know I've sent you a few emails about restoration that a couple of one of them for sure is like three weeks old with no response I'm supposed to get through AECOM and so I'm just trying to one understand this process but then number two is there anything in the contract that is like it was with the, re the replacement that if you don't meet the deadline that there was I can't remember what it's called liquidated, liquidated damages is that something that's involved with this? Because I'm sure there is. B, you said there's not through you to whoever it wants to say. Okay. So, so our um, before I approve this, I want to know: Are we looking towards liquidated damages? One, and then what they are two. And it's disappointing to have a contractor that thinks that they did something right and it wasn't right and that you had to actually go over it. And so can we get that information before the vote on this? What the liquidated damages are and how many houses that they're going to need to do this? Because what are we giving them? Basically two months, right? And then my last question is, are these the things that they need to complete, things that were part of their bid and therefore given? So it wouldn't affect Ms. Brown's restoration no. at all. Yeah. So they, they, this is part of their contract. Mm -hmm. It's part of the areas they were assigned. It will not affect her in any way. Um, this is really finishing up the phase four stuff. Um, and what was your other? Oh, your other question was liquidated damages. At this time, we're not, I don't believe we're looking to seek li liquidated damages. Um, <coughs> is that something that, through you, Mr. Chair, too, is that something that, mm -hmm. through you, too, Mr. to continue to talk to Mr. Oh, Chair? yeah. Okay. You um, want to use that a minute and 52 seconds. Okay. So, so, tell me, and I don't know, tell me how we're deciding whether we exercise seeking liquidated damages or not who's making that decision because what it says is that we're foregoing 
revenue that was built into the contract in an effort to ensure that contractors stayed on task. So it kind of was supposed to be the teeth to make sure that people did what they were supposed to do. Isn't that not correct? I think that's a fair assumption. Yeah, so if we're not assumption. doing it and we're just saying you didn't do a good job, but you know what? We're going to give you 30 days with, I mean, with no, I don't know, maybe you guys, maybe I'm off task. It just doesn't seem that like that's fair. Especially in, I don't know where Zito is because they're probably not my problem. But the, the, dis, the disappointment of my constituents and what they've had to go through where this restoration process is, is going to say that we have a contra contractors that are not doing what they're supposed to do, that have penalties in their contracts, and then we as a, 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 a municipality who is the fiduciary for those very residents to say, you didn't do that good, we're not going to take your money, we're actually going to give you more time to do what you did, so hopefully you do it better with no consequences. I don't support that, and so I don't know if council gets to be a part of that, how contracts are implemented, who decides, yes, we're going to seek liquidated damages, and who will not, and I am done. I want those questions answered by the time this is put before us. Ms. Galloway, three minutes, 20, Look at me. Three minutes, 20 seconds. Ms. Brown, and then there's some more council persons to be recognized. Ms. Brown. I think for historical and also accounting reasons, in the, in the resolve paragraph, where you show change order number five, there should be a statement included to show that with no additional funds required. Because normally when you do a change order, it's not only to extend, but the majority of the time is to add more money. Yeah. So, but, so what? But even though you got it in the staff review, that's the staff review. Okay. I have to look at the historical document, which is the actual resolution per se. And those two so, pieces of paper got separated. Right. So, what you show change order in the last paragraph? Mm -hmm. You can make this a point one. That's fine. To show that you no additional cost. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. get to the bottom of this idle $2 million contract. And I'm going to get to it sooner than later. I politely ask folks to come up. I don't agree that some folks ain't nobody. Everybody is somebody. And so I want to talk to, to somebody in these positions. So I want to send the word out politely again. This discussion item has been postponed two weeks. Now I'm going to ask that Mr. Gilchrist and or the mayor attend the next finance committee. And if I have to, the people got to come and go. I got the opportunity to move stuff right to the top. But now, if something ain't happening, it's going to be handled probably in the investigative hearing. And so, Ms. Brown, hang in there. We get close. Everybody in Flint in some positions know people. The word is moving around. I was at the 100 year anniversary of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church with the mayor Sunday. So I talked publicly and sometimes privately. We'll get there. Hang in there. Um, so, as it relates to that on the new business, and I see you, Ms. Galloway, I'm going to recognize you, but I've been listening and chairing all meeting long. And as we get ready to move out, as soon as I hand you the floor, anybody else the floor, they can move to adjourn. It's always in order. But I always find a mechanical way, even as chair, even though I listen to people, to try to take care of my business. So I did it with Peter Dyke, I'm going to do it with you, and I would stay tuned for the governmental operations meeting. Um, now, with that being said, Rob, Wait, Ms. 
Mr. Newsom. I have something that I want to I will, but when I give up the flow, I don't know what y'all going to do. Right. Rob and Mr. Newsom, have y'all got any comment other than what you said, Rob? When can she, ex you say you had sent work to her? Point of information. What's your point? As the chair, I just want you to be fair, Councilman Mays. I'm not trying to manipulate the process, but I have some. Point of information is a short inquiry. Right, You're using it to take the floor. But it doesn't seem as the chair you've been Okay, right well, now. I am being fair. I've been fair. I, you might not view me as being fair right now, but under new business, I am being fair. And I'm about done. Don't prolong it because I have been fair and will continue to be fair to you and all the colleagues. And I'm going to be fair to myself as an equal elected representative on issues that's germane to me and the people I represent. So, Mr. Benzik, you have sent the addresses to her? Yes. Have you received them? I have received the addresses. How many do you know? 545. And that equates to how much in dollars and cents? Uh, $270,000. So with a close to three hundred thousand, with one hundred thousand or so, so that two million might be up to four hundred thousand. If we go two seventy, and then what you had did I about four hundred and something, so this will take us up close to eight hundred thousand. Okay, we move. Uh, we'll continue to talk publicly and privately. If any time this. Wheeler, you feel we need to discuss something in executive session for whatever legal reason, I'm open to that with Mr. Gilchrist, the Mayor Rob, or whoever, and Ms. Brown. So I'm, I'm also looking at those type of communications, but I'm politely pushing the envelope. Uh, Ms. Wheeler? Yeah, I was just going to say, we, we in the executive the session, if we write some type of legal opinion, we can have it on there, but it would not include Ms. Brown. Okay, well, the discussion about her would be whatever. Right, exactly. I'm just. You saying you wouldn't want her in there? It would, yeah, because we're 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 here as the city well, providing yeah. legal advice on an issue related to a contract, and the contractor doesn't get to come into an executive session. That'll be fine. We can do it that way, and right. when we go in executive session, just like the rest of them, she can wait. But it, if you feel it's a need, because right, I'm just, of the, yeah, you know, I just wanted to mention that because you, you mentioned her, and I didn't want to make sure I had the did. expectation that that wasn't. Yeah, happen. I appreciate that. Yeah. But that was what I was thinking. So you were right. You didn't read me wrong. But just stay on top of it. Yes, and then um, whenever the need of people don't want to, we'll see if technically and legally we can. Ms. Galloway? Yes, Ms. Brown. Um, or through you, Mr. Chair, to Ms. Brown. So I just want you to know that I want to understand what's going on. But there are not enough of the decision makers in this meeting tonight. What you, what I heard you share today is what you shared the other day, except in addition you did bring up the Boyette contract of which we need to look at. I'm a little bit concerned because the person that normally walks us through the bid process and helps us understand the verbiage is not there. So, Mr. Newsom respectfully is acting as the purchasing director, but some of those interpretations, you know, Derek Jones had did them a long time. So some of the things that we might not have understood in a bid, he could help with that. The other piece that I, I, I want to say, it, it disappointed me. I don't know what you sent back as far as addresses, but the way that I heard it, and I could have heard it wrong, was almost as if we did send her, but she wasn't satisfied with it. And so I don't I don't know if that's what you that's what I heard. Yeah, and so that's why I wanted to ask you, you know, to be and then to say I don't know what they were when it was brought up was disappointing to me on this side of the table, not on your side. So can you share what may have been, you know, opened up here but not explained? I had I received an excerpt. Oh, this of 1,972 supposedly homes that had been blacked out, and only 584 84 of them 
forty-five of them, five hundred and forty-five of them showed up out of that nineteen hundred homes. Where um, the city lady, her name is Betty. Mm -hmm. When she sent it to me, she said this is the list that she received from AECOM, that they had taken out the ones that they had wanted to take out, and this was what they had sent her. So I asked her to unhide what was there out of the Excel to send me what they was hiding in the other columns. So that's what uh, she was doing was trying to find out what was in the other columns because that's what I wanted to know. What was they what was they hiding in the other columns? Because you knew columns was hid because it was A and then it was D and then so those columns in between was hid. Then there there was a list of 1,900 of them that was on that list, but it was only 545 of them there. So all those other lines had been deleted. So through you to Mr. Benzik, and maybe you know or maybe you don't know, um, Rob, with Miss Brown's, and this is going to be my last question, with Miss Brown's contract, did her contract, like some of the other contractors, include specific addresses or no? Yes, it depends. If again, sir, um, it did not include specific addresses, okay. I don't believe. Um, the addresses that would be included in her restoration would be, I think there's approximately 900 of them that were hydrovac and identified as copper county. So that means she had actually identified them through hydrovac. Yes. And those are the addresses that y'all are giving her. Yes. And they had been sitting this long with no work. Yes. Um, Ms. Fields. I'd like to point out, I pointed out in several of these meetings where there are contracts regarding water infrastructure, low pipes, etc. We are paying AECOM five million dollars. Five million dollars to manage all these projects. I also feel it's not appropriate to have these discussions without AECOM here because they're supposed to be managing these projects. So why isn't AECOM here? Is five million not enough to get their attention or, or assure that they can show up at meetings we're discussing these issues. I mean, it's just not appropriate to have these issues brought up and, and AECOM not being represented. And no disrespect to Mr. Gilchrist, he is being paid from the Kellogg Foundation grant as an economic development advisor. He has nothing to do with pipes, water, infrastructure, as far as I know. So AECOM, I believe, are the correct people that should be here along with Mr. Benzik, and with that said, Mr. I move Ms. to adjourn. Ms. Um, Ms. Ms. Fields have made a motion to adjourn, and a motion to adjourn is always in order. Um, Ms. Worthy. I second So it's been moved and properly second. What is in order is when we will meet again. There's you can. Point of information. Yeah. Is there, I thought that with a motion to adjourn, there was no discussion. There is no discussion. There's only one thing you can discuss, and you can discuss when you meet again, and that type of thing, in a motion to adjourn, so you can check it out. But rather than confuse you, I won't discuss it. I'll, I'll let y'all look it up. So when you look it up, you'll know that there is an exception to a motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjournment signified by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Um, this meeting is adjourned. AECOM was invited to this meeting, Ms. Fields. I want to say that. In the res in the discussion item asked for AECOM, Goyet, Gill, the mayor. So I don't like folks to throw stuff out there and then move to adjourn and ain't getting it right. These discussion <laughs> items was postponed by, yes, yeah, adjourned. These discussion items was postponed by the council, not AECOM, not the mayor, and not Mr. Gilchrist, Ms. Fields. So the slick move to throw some bad information out there and adjourn ain't cool. And I ain't buying them slick moves. So it's adjourned and I'm talking. Rule me out order.
It ain't no meeting going on. I'd like to start legislating. No, point of order. It's adjourned. Oh, because what legislative come after finance? Yeah, I keep thinking government are, but they moved it. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, there's a special order. Like a robot, uh, 180514. Uh, I left this open because I knew that there were some that uh, were thinking about changes to the um, med medical marijuana ordinance, but uh, Ms. Wilcox is going to Madam Chair. address that. Uh, Mr. Mace. Yeah, if you go into the special order on legislative, um, and this is the miracle med medical marijuana. I've been sitting in on them planning commission meetings, but really you can rule me out of order when you see what I'm finna do. The last thing I didn't get to show y'all in finance was this check registry. I don't know if y'all got it. I'll sneak it in later, but that was it before it was adjourned. The check registry. So, I'm quiet. Okay, Ms. Wilcox. Um, I had contacted Councilwoman Worthing. I saw that there was, uh, there was a special order on the agenda, and I understand that there are some questions and potentially some conversations um, about amending the ordinance. So I'm not, um, I'm not entirely sure where that's going, but I offered to provide an update just on uh, the status of the, um, the current processing of applications. I do know that Councilman Mays has attended um, a planning commission meeting and um, and had some had some questions or concerns, but uh, one of the things I can talk about is just related to um, to the applications, the status of the applications that we have received. We've received 19 applications, as you know, they were due September 14th um, by three o'clock. We received 19 applications. That translates to approximately 19 bankers' boxes of information. Just um, just so you understand the scope of work that we're working with. Um, we've spent, our staff has spent approximately 40 hours um, so far copying those documents in order to be made available to the review committee. Um, we estimate that it's approximately 95 hours of time spent to redact um, those documents and that has not started yet. Uh, the total, uh, we estimate approximately three hours per application for staff review according to the rubric that was adopted by ordinance. That has obviously not been done yet given the fact that all of the applications have to be redacted first. Our best <laughs> estimate is that um, the earliest we will, uh, the Planning Commission will see cases for approval would be approximately late November. That is, um, that's a pretty liberal estimate, um, but we are working towards that date right now. Um, to date, we've received only one application for Grow a Process Facility. This will be going before the Planning Commission later this month for permit approval. Um, according to Lara, just for your information, no center has been granted a license in Flint as of late September. Um, one more thing point to point out is that the emergency rules indicate 1031 is a shutdown date. This is the date that um, um, all facilities must have local and state license in order to continue operation. And to date, eight facilities have been issued attestation I-forms, which is the ability to continue to operate after the 1031 deadline. For specific information, Reed Erickson is here and, um, and can speak to additional things. I do know that there was a question about, um, about um, um, uh, plans that had been um, disapproved by the Planning Commission. There have been three, um, three plans that have been presented to the Planning Commission. Um, two were de one was approved, so there was one plan that was approved. Two were denied, and neither of those two um, went to the Zoning Board of Appeals within their allotted time frame. So uh, just to give you an update, and I'm not sure exactly what the special order, um, what the questions were, but this is just an update, and Reed may have additional information he'd like to present. Madam Chair, yeah, I have sit in on the uh, planning commission meeting. I know Red had a point where I listened to them through you to uh, read and to the legal department. I listened at them trying to ask questions and maybe apply the legislation that we have enacted. For example, 
I heard one plan and commissioner. When we created the rubric, the rubric was simply to see who gets interviewed first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You know, they're going three at a time, they say it, whatever they do. But then, um, maybe they'll get it, get it straightened out. I didn't want to inter interrupt their meeting. But that rubric and who was first has nothing to do with the details that they'll still have to interview. They seem to think if they come first, and it might be technically some truth to it or not technically, but all that is is an order. They don't even have to worry about how folks are great. They need to go A, B, C, D based upon the ordinances and learn this stuff afresh. So I'm concerned about that. I'll probably go back to planning commission meeting and address it or clear it up in public comment because that's the type of thing I use my public comment for. And so I'll continue to monitor and watch and see if the application of the ordinances like the legislative intent. But so far, so good. Um, it's also true that the state gave an extension on the September date to December through you, Madam Chair, to Attorney Erickson, if he may. Thank you. Very, very briefly, Madam Chair, Councilman Mays, um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that was one point I kind of wanted to piggyback off of the point that Suzanne had raised. Um, the state has had a moving deadline on this. But it was originally June 15th, and then they extended it to September, and then for some applicants, and they didn't release the list of who was in good standing in Lara's eyes and who was not as far as the status of their application, they were going to extend the deadline to September 15th. Uh, an attorney representing some of the applicants filed suit and received a preliminary injunction from the Michigan Court of Claims, who issued an order stating that you can't treat various applicants differently. They all had to receive the extension the same length and moved it to December 15th. But even more recently, Lara has taken that order and said, okay, we have to treat them all the same, and moved that deadline back to October 31st. So currently, and I say currently because this deadline has moved four times already, currently the uh, facilities that are, have not been granted a state license but are operating under the temporary rules, like our, the grandfathered facilities, the ones that received an attestation I, in the city of Flint, uh, they have until October 31st currently to get their state license. Now, will Lara move that date? I can't say, but they, they've done it four times already. Because it seemed like the some of them. It. it was. <laughs> Sorry, you, you're continuing. You have more questions. Are you talking about? Go ahead. Hmm? Point of information. Yeah. Are we time? I can assure you I won't use the five minutes and when it goes on and off when it goes on and off when he talks when y'all were talking you use two, three, four minutes. I didn't really see no. No, I think she was I'm No, he was timing. I'm I'm point of order, Miss Galloway. I thought you had the point of information. Oh she wanted to know for your timing. It's, it's all right. Is there, uh, Mr. Mays is going to continue and then we'll have more discussion after that if anyone else would like to speak. Go ahead, Mr. Mays. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Erickson, that order that was extended, it was probably a hundred or ninety-eight of them that they thought wasn't going to proceed with the extension because <clears throat> Some of them might not have put in an application or something of that nature, I thought. But now you say all of them, particularly for Flint, the ones that was grandfathered in, if they haven't put in an application, they would have to that October date to apply to the state. Taft. They, by this point, they all should have started their application. They should have. Do yes. we know if those 12 or 13 did? Until Lara issues an order telling them they're, they... They cannot operate, and once that deadline passes, we anticipate a list like that coming out. They are not releasing the information on the application status. Well, we don't know how Correct. many of the 12 did. Is that information requested on our local application? That whether they applied to the state? 
For new licenses, yes. But the old grandfather clause then don't have to come back before us. Correct, and those are the ones that are in that temporary operation. So those are just provisional centers, and right. those 12 or 13 don't have to do nothing with us. They just deal with the state. Correct. So we can't see their application because they had, unless they go into growing or processing or safety or transport, they don't have to apply it and do nothing under our new ordinance. Well, they, other than apply for the state. They don't have to come back to approve the planning commission for nothing, or they don't have to check in at y'all. They do have to check in in the fact that they had they were given under the ordinance six months to make any updates to become in, come into compliance with the new ordinance, like the security plan and that sort of thing. But as far as their license, no, at the city level, we, we deem them licensed because they're grandfathered and we give them a license of the old ordinance, and we did the attestation eyes as long as they pass their inspections. And so when is they renewal? Various dates. They got to come back to us. They will have to come back. Yes, they will. It's a one-year license. So yeah, because I just couldn't see us um, as it's legislators not, not bringing them back in and right. checking on stuff. So, okay, that kind of helps me there. Uh, we are under crunch. This is a special order. He, she asked, was they using the clock? That's really on motions. I'm just going to be sensitive. I did what, Ms. Galloway? You used the clock on the special order? I was doing it on motions. When motions was made, you're wrong. So I didn't do that. Don't put confused. that on me. I Sorry. didn't do that. When I, I encourage Sorry. people to talk without a motion. I, I, I didn't do that. I take a bad breath, but I hear you. No harm, no foul. You might have thought I did. But anyway, thank you, Madam Chair. Monica, I Sorry. have a question. Um, do you, to Mr. Attorney Reed, um, so are we able to go on Laura and look at the facilities in our area? Well, we're not, we can't look at the applications on Laura. As far as those that have been granted licenses, that's public information. So once the license is granted or denied, that, that is published. It's on the agenda for their meetings, and they are done in an open meeting. Uh, I believe, I want to say Burton or Mount Morris, there's one that received a license in the, in the Flint metropolitan area. None from the state have received one within city proper, though. Does that answer your question? I, I guess. Well, usually when Laura is involved, right. You are able to check anybody's license. Yes, once a license is granted or denied, we'll know that affirmatively. We just don't know if it's once pending the status of it. Okay, but but what what you're what you're saying is we've we've granted the ones that are grandfathered in. Yes. And we don't know what I, I think I'm confused right. on that so that piece of for, it. For a state license, you need local approval. Okay. And so. We're treating that kind of as a local dual license. You have a local license, so to speak, and then you have the state license, which is the big one. And for the ones that have existed under the old ordinance, we're giving the local approval forms because they have been licensed at the city and in good standing. Uh, BSI and the fire marshal have done recent inspections to make sure that they're still in compliance. Then we sign that <coughs> attestation I form after that. So that does that actually guarantee or really guarantee them a license through LARA? Far from it. Oh. Um, the state so far has been very conservative in the licenses that they've granted. They've been meticulous and on financial and back, criminal background reviews. Uh, I won't make any commentary whether that's good or bad, um, but they've been very conservative. So if we say and yes, and they say no, and they say no, it's still a no. So they'll shut down shop they will have when we are here. Yes. Okay, and but you're saying that time frame is being extended out for them to really. It's moved a couple times. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, are you done? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. Madam Chair, do you have any? Uh, no. Okay, and the reason I asked, if I may, Madam Chair, um, as I watched that application and intent, I don't think there's nothing wrong with asking the chair or the planning commission or some member or staff. We might have to talk. And so we, I go to planning commission meetings. I go to ethic committee meetings. I go to a variety of meetings. But we don't always see these people come to us. 
And so just as I throw the ethics committee, they got to get a budget request in. And that discussion item was on there. It's been postponed. And that's handicapping them. The planning commission legislative intent means something. And I said, and listen, so keep that in mind, Madam Chair. If that special order stays, it might come a time when one person or staff who works with the planning commission, we might have to communicate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. Mr. Hanks, very briefly before we close out the special order, I do just want to bring up that there's a tremendous change very likely coming. Uh, five weeks from today is the general election, which includes the referendum for recreational marijuana. After that time, I, I would, because uh, maybe about two years ago, we were pretty certain an election would go one way and it went a very different direction. So I haven't done a lot of, a, a ton of work on preparing any sort of legal memorandum advising of the, it's likely to pass. So in the event that it does pass, I would like to address this body on kind of the consequences of that. Um, one, one tidbit is it does reverse the approach, so under the medical marijuana you have to opt in, the default is you're out, right, it's the opposite uh, for recreational. So if you do nothing, you're considered to be in, and if you affirmatively opt out, then you would not be participating in recreational licenses. There's a lot of gray area that Laura's got to figure out still, um, but uh, uh, this process is far from over. Uh, Ms. Galloway? Um, and you to read, um, read, and isn't it true that if if the recreational marijuana passes and we do not opt out, it is once the the vote is verified, it goes into effect in eleven days. I believe it's ten, but yeah, we're mm -hmm. ten, ten days. But and that gets us into another gray area because recreational marijuana under that approach would be legal after 10 days, but recreational licenses, Laura has a year to put in a, put a structure in place to be granting licenses. So where you would buy your legal recreational marijuana? <laughs> and the reason why I was asking that is because um, at the convention that we went to in Grand Rapids, I attended the legislation um, and actually facilitated the HR up in smoke if legalized marijuana happens, what happens to um, employment law? Sure. Right. And so, but one of the one of the, the speakers was um, the lead counsel in Colorado, and um, he shared that when before Colorado actually went live with recreational marijuana, they took 14 months right. to iron it out. They said, he said, and I will tell you that we took 14 months to roll it out and we still weren't prepared for the things that we came up against. And he said, and so I'm telling you guys that in this session because at 10 days, I'm scared for you guys. You need to know. And so I just, as we go through this, he said there's still a lot of things. And again, this is 14 months out. Right before they actually implemented what the law was saying. And he was saying, um, what is that? I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, I was just okay. saying 10 days is oh. quick. Oh, huh? I said 10 days is quick. <laughs> right, and, and so his point was, um, do your research, utilize the municipalities that are doing it, that did take the time. He said, we have a list of stuff we can tell you guys that we had to learn trial and error and we, we didn't even start as fast as you guys do. And so um, I have his name and information if anybody wants it. But it's kind of ner nervous. And then through the league, you know, they keep us up to date on different movements. Sure. And even though the verbiage through recreational and what we can deem as reasonable and what they deem as reasonable, um, it's being said that municip local municipalities really need to um, make sure that they write ordinances that really help them to really get through it well. And so I don't know if you guys do that, but the, the Michigan Municipal League has a legal team as well. Right. And so they just try to keep municipalities up to date on legislation and how it could impact them on the local level. Now the state may not have that problem 
because they have a lot more resources than we do and they can kind of take their time on how they move and so um, maybe we can discuss that as we progress into this to make sure that we have a, a smooth transition. Absolutely. Mr. Erickson, um, if I keep this on here uh, again, what do you think like in November you could uh, update us like what, six weeks? That would, that would be ideal. Actually, one of the things that, that between now and November, I don't know how much, it's obviously only my two cents, uh, but I don't know how much action at least I would advise us to do on marijuana policy until we know what's going to happen with recreation because that's such a seismic change to the whole, the whole scheme. And then we'll have Laura rules coming down the pipeline, but at least then we'll know what the statutory law will be. Um, so, not to mention on our licenses, as Suzanne said, we're in the process of implementing that um, merit review now. It's going to be lengthy for the non-merit review licensees, which is growing the process, and they can go through the process as soon as they'd like to. Uh, but so, we've got a lot on our plate right now for, for medical marijuana, and uh, we're interested, to say the least, what recreational brings. Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, the recreational and the medical is two different things. Agenda item-wise, the recreational, you could have out here, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but if it passed, that's like you have 2.5 ounces on your person, you might have 10 pounds or more at home. I mean, this is some different language as it relates to the amounts that's fixing to be passed. Um, 2.5 ounces on person, I heard, and 10 for 12 pounds at home. That's a lot of weed. <laughs> That's a lot of weed. So, you know, the league talked about it as it relates to some of the tweaks and quantities. Um, and so that's one of the things that you must understand when you deal with the recreational legal language and um, what's going on with um, medical. And so I'm not going to get into it. I just wanted to respond to his caveat. I'm done for right now with the um, special order, his caveat, and what he said about recreational. Yeah, we're going to be busy as a bee. First, we'll see if we stay in or opt out. And, uh, I'll probably recommend stay in. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend opt out for the city, but I look forward to see how that vote count happens. Um, and that vote count on that's going to be important. But I don't know who's talking about it. In the city of Flint, I haven't heard all the details discussed and don't know if I will. Seems like some of the political types and leadership positions are staying out of it. I'll be not staying out of it. I know it. I'll be both. And um, we'll see what happens in the state of Michigan as it relates to Colorado and California. I've seen a lot of money being made. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Janelle, can we just revisit this special order in six weeks? Just so You can postpone for six weeks. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Are we moving on? Have you closed out this special order? Well, no. I thought you wanted to... Are you, you no, know? I don't want to speak. I want to move on to the next special order, please. <laughs> okay. We, any other discussion? We are done with special order 180514, and now we are on 180476. Madam Chair, I'd like to move the CWAC ordinance uh, as presented to council um, to council for first reading. Wait, uh, Ms. Wilcox, didn't we already do that for what first reading? Yes, yes, we have one. We've been presented with one. They present, I had asked to postpone this for two weeks while I could review the ordinance just to make sure. Point of information. What's your point? <coughs> I'll look. Where is it at? Right. Yeah. It Okay, it might be attached to the original. No, no, it's not. I think we got it two weeks ago. Maybe it's like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah this is just a special order. They already moved it for first reading uh, at the last council meeting. They did move it for first reading? I don't, think so. I don't believe they did. That's what I was told. No. 
Ms. Wheeler? Yeah, um, I just I just remember as uh, Councilman Phil said that she wanted a little bit of additional time and it was postponed. Um, I, I don't know if it was postponed. For you. I just know it didn't get moved to Council. No, I don't think I, I don't think so. But I yeah. maybe I, mean, I wasn't at Council. Two different things. I, no, yeah, you are getting confused, Madam Chair. <laughs> Okay, they had presented us, basically it was the same ordinance that we had, had read at a first and second reading, and then Ms. Wheeler notified us because the EFM order or something or other, 10 was still in place, it was not valid, so it's still the same ordinance that they read, I'm just making a motion to move that to council for a first reading. There's a motion on the floor? Is there support? Janelle, I'll oh. I believe what happened is that was a discussion item on the agenda, and so I pulled what they had done previously, the latest one that I could find, but it wasn't for setting it to council or anything, it was just for your information. Are you saying that? I'm, I'm telling you what the history point was. Point uh, what's your point of order? Yeah, but I think I'm, ask, I'm asking for clarity if that's she, the one she, she wants sent to council, then I will pull that back off. Yeah, I heard that. I didn't say nothing, but she was going okay. back in. Is that what you want? Oh, okay. said, point of Let me amend my motion. Okay. Okay. I would move that we, I would make a motion that we send this to special affairs, at which point the council point is provided. Point of order. Is she withdrawing the original motion? You don't amend that without it being second. So just withdraw the original motion so and start a new motion. That's what I would suggest. <laughs> All right, Madam Chair, I'll withdraw that motion and make another one. Okay, I move that. We send this ordinance to special affairs for consideration to be moved to council for a first reading. Is there a second? A second. Okay. I, I just, I need clarification. There's no ordinance. Um, Am I right? No, well, this is the new one. Neither one of them got it attached. I, I will make sure you have copies by special affairs. Okay. Yeah. Were they right? Yeah, it's two weeks. Ms. Wheeler. Yeah, they were provided yeah. two weeks ago. Oh, and, they say they have And I think that it does, I think it is helpful to clear everything up if we can have it on for Monday. I mean, I think we're on the same page. I'll get, I'll get the copy that I gave everybody a couple weeks ago. Yeah, because we did provide the latest final revised, or, you know, proposed final yes. copy. Yes. Madam Chair, I would um, make a substitute motion to move that to special affairs. What was her motion to council? Was the motion? Oh, okay. 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 So there's I a can withdraw that. <laughs> so let me let me add, clear something up. So we'll get a copy of the motion in question Monday in special affairs. Before Monday. Before Monday. But we'll, but it'll show up the copy of the proposed ordinance for and it'll show up in special affairs. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any yes. other discussion? All in favor of moving the CWAC uh, ordinance to special affairs? Say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Madam Chair. Mr. Oh, I think it was 8-0. Okay, Mr. Guerra. Make motion for special items, so that's legislative. There's a motion on the floor. Support. There's support. Discussion. Yeah, Madam Chair. I'm not going to support postpone and postpone and postpone it. I'm looking at the discussion items. I'll see what you say as it relates to them. I know what I'll say. I'm looking at a discussion item 180443. It say would like to discuss the possibility of amending the code with regard to blight information and an order include $500 possible jail time. One thing that I'm getting a number of calls on is that folks is buying side lots to their house, parking.
fucking running cars and they're getting tickets. I'm not down with that. If I buy an extra lot and I want to park a car somewhere, I should be able to. So I'm asking that that um, ordinance that's prohibiting folks who park on their own property be brought to the next um, legislative committee meeting because I want to try to change and amend that. But further, if I can get a copy of that particular ordinance in my mailbox, then I want to look at it prior. Um, if I may yield to Janelle and um, Miss Wheeler, okay. I would be interested in hearing what's um, going to be Janelle, said. I think that's like the city code, right? It's not an ordinance or it's a Are you talking about parking on the lawn? Uh, what do you well, that's why I'm yelling to Miss Wheeler and whatever. No, no it's, they, it's, a, it's an ordinance no. that prohibits parking on your own property. Oh, no. And I'm telling you, whether it's the line or in these cases, I know they want you in the ordinance, you can put gravel or black top your side lot, then you're going to be in compliance. That's what I want to look at. I want to look at amending that to put, put folks in compliance whether they gravel it, black top it or not. So I know it's spoke of in the ordinance. I'm asking that the ordinance be put in my box. And when I read it, I'll figure out where it might can be amended. And then I want it on the agenda as a discussion item and legislative. I'm out to change the law and amend that. When you get residents, I paid $25 for one of them. I'm saying to myself, this is a mess. It ain't but three houses on one street, and they getting a ticket for parking on a lot. That don't make sense to me from my view and from the residents that I represent, because they calling and asking me, and I'm dealing with it. And so I'm going to find out about it. You know something about parking. We finna look at that. What we'll do, I can't speak on but what I can look at, I can assure you, I got the eyes and brain to look at. Um, if 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 nobody objects to me getting a copy of the relevant ordinance, if nobody objects from me hearing from Miss Wheeler, um, I'm ready to hear. Miss Wheeler, yeah, it would probably be helpful to know specifically what the ticket was written for. So if you're able to get a copy of that. That will help a little bit to know exactly what it is. Um, and like I said, not to expand too much because I think we want to know what it was they were the ticket for before prejudging the situation because I know there are some um, international property maintenance code um, requirements um, by, the, by the state that we, it, like I said, depending on what it is, we, it could be something that we may not be able to amend. But before I make any pronouncements. I think if you're able to get a hold of the ticket and then we can talk tomorrow, I can I can get you that. And then any relevant ordinances with regard to that um, locally and uh, statewide that are that are adopted by the city. Miss Madam Chair, Ms. I don't think I'm gonna go out looking for tickets. Because regardless of what them tickets was wrote on Regardless of what the ticket was wrote on, that ain't my point. I want to see the ordinance. Now, I know the ticket was wrote for parking on private property, and the car was up and running. And so the ticket now has been set aside because they going to give him a chance to move it, which he will, and he getting a warning. Now, if he put it back under this ordinance, he gonna get a ticket. So I ain't chasing no ticket down. But I'm chasing the ordinance down. Because when I change and amend the ordinance, if I get support, it will be no tickets for that. So I don't have to track the tickets down in all due respect. But I, if it helps you, I'm gonna let y'all track them down. Cause y'all would have a stack of them. I ain't tracking none down. But now let me say this. I've requested through the through you, Madam Chair, that the legal department put the relevant ordinance or whatever they research to be relevant um, in my box. That's what I'm asking. And I'm also asking for a discussion item on legislative 
committed. It's as simple as that. So when we get into it and I see it, then I'll have a better feel if that's the only ordinance or is it need to be some more. So I'm satisfied with that and I'm satisfied with the direction that I'm going to attempt to go in as it relates to property that folks own. You know, in the old days, it was a lot of houses sitting close together. They had driveways, two, three cars, General Motors was hot. Now we kind of like the rural community. The weeds is hot. And I know out in the country I could set my property on my, my property on my property. I don't care what nobody downtown say. Councilman Mays is going to be fighting for some folks across this city to be able to park property on their property. Did somebody say something? Did I miss something? I thought I heard something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Winfrey. Um, th there is an ordinance, and that ordinance does specifically, very specific, and you, you, at this point, you cannot, whether you own the property, whether it's your house, or whether it's the property that you own adjacent to your property, you cannot park on that property or you will get a warrant. You cannot park on it unless it is paid for automobiles to be there. Now, uh, my colleague made a, made a statement that um, the, the, the people that he supported, I understand that, but there will be a critical mass of folks that I, that I support that is they're just not going to like changing that ordinance because of whatever their reasons are, they're citizens just like everybody else. So Point I, of I information. Mr. You don't think it's wrong to review the ordinance? Though. No, I'm saying I was getting ready to review the ordinance. I was getting ready to say I was at the discussion. So, yeah. so no, no, because we all need it. Obviously, some of us don't uh, have to sit. I want to be in the discussion. I want to look at the <clears throat> uh, Mr. Griggs. Okay, uh, you might want to consider changing the ordinance maybe for just your ward, Councilman Mays, because in Ward 8, my constituents will not support that. I'm already getting vehicles impounded, and I get them impounded twice. If they drive them back, I get them impounded again. Now, my constituents will not stand for cars parking yards. So maybe you should do this by the ward. Point of information. Mr. Mr. You, Madam Chair, and Mr. Griggs, do you really believe we can do legislation like that? No. All right. Well, okay. 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 Not going on in more okay. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I see a double standard when it comes to that because I'm in business and I hope I got buses and all kinds of stuff. Some stuff parked over there by Dayton, some stuff parked over across town. But I want to say this. I know a friend of mine own a major sound company, and it's in Ward 9. And it ain't nothing but semi trucks on lines. But then when I drive downtown at Raymond Cafe, it's a little old car parked on the sidewalk 24 7. Somebody got to make sure they be non biased in these ordinances. The police don't mess with them. But over there, like me and Councilman Mays, they tend to have heavily police, especially state police, not Flint, state police. And they will stop you for driving while black and all this other stuff on that side. It's got to be a balance of what you do, just like signage. You can't do certain signage with the, the Dayton family wanted the, the honorary sign. We ain't having to have that done as well as a pastor, a bishop, uh, Aikens. Haven't happened yet. But... When you ride downtown, you see trolley signs. You see all kinds of stuff on that sidewalk. They drink open intoxicant on the sidewalk. But yet, on the other side, you go to jail for the same thing. If you just petition off, you bring your beer out, your table's out, and you go to drinking. It's, it's a bias that has to be replaced sooner or later where the constituents get bad treatment all over this municipality. Else it's just not right. Now, blighted vehicles, I understand. Now, I understand that if you mow a land bank lot, you're all right. But if you park on that lot, if you maintain that lot, even if you lease that lot, <laughs> it's still a violation. They don't want you to touch their property. 
but they won't maintain their property. So it's something we really need to really look at. If it's at the state level, the state need to deal with it because it's not fair for them to maintain blight as a DDA authority or whoever. I was out at the Flint Township today. My wife worked at the Township Police and how they DPW mow and blow, but I notice how in our side of town you mow for the paper. You, it's, it's, it's a respect, of, but the people paying taxes is not right. So we really need to visit this thing seriously, but we got to have the balance of that policing because I'm frustrated with the state police. Heavy police, everybody is not not a, a criminal on the north side of Flint. But downtown, I'm yet to see a state trooper pull anybody over. So we really need to look at, when you leave here, if you go downtown, you'll see an orange little circus looking car. It's main, now let that bend on the north side, they'll bend pull that car, and I'm done. Just as the councilwoman for the ninth ward, I do get complaints about semis being parked. I think, I just want to let you know. Out. Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't know why it's not being enforced, but I have put in for blight for that. So it may be an issue of where people aren't complaining, so I don't know, it's not getting done. Um, okay, so all in favor of uh, the motion on the floor, which is to postpone all the discussion items. Uh, raise your hand and say aye. Uh, aye. Point, of info, point of order. We passed the motion to send that thing to special affairs already, and we on discussion items as to what's to postpone. No, there was actually a motion that was seconded to postpone the discussion items, and I allowed you to speak on your one. Okay, and so that's the motion that we was on, see? And so that's what I was asking to repeat the motion that we was on. But I, I believe, is, are there any names to that? Beg your pardon? Um, postponing the discussion, he's an name. In any case, one, two, three, four, five, six said yes, so... I don't know. I don't know. All right, um, Miss, and now we're on to new business, uh, Miss Fields. I would like to make a referral to legal for them to prepare some legislation regarding lobbying and some suggested fees with whoever they need to work with, as per the city charter, um, about lobbying and registering to be a lobbyist. I think it's on page thirteen and fourteen. So that's one referral. Um, I also would like to make a referral or a request for a special order for, I'm not sure which is the right committee, government ops or legislation, but we need to do our appointments for the Human Relations Commission in order to be, um, according to the charter, we're supposed to be making those appointments. So um, does anybody have a preference? Mr. Winfrey okay. said governmental ops, so we're going to go with that for the Human Relations Commission. Fine with me. And then the last thing I want to bring up is quite a bit earlier I noticed Mr. Hamilton, and because it's legislative committee, you understand why I'm bringing this up. A while back, the DPW deputy director was brought to us as a job description to be made into an ordinance. And at the time, I spoke about they had this position listed as an appointed position. And that's what brought up the whole discussion about how many appointments is the mayor allowed under the charter, where do we stand currently, etc. So I just found out Mr. Hamilton, who is here, has recently been hired as an exempt employee which in actuality was the correct thing to do because they posted the job as an exempt <coughs> employee and not as a point of position. But now I want to point out to council that I told you at the time, until this issue was resolved, you shouldn't be passing an ordinance with the job description for an appointed position, which council went ahead and did anyway. So now I want to point out that we have the job description in an ordinance uh, and we've hired somebody diametrically opposed to what that position is supposed to be, so I think legal needs to get this straightened out somehow. Ms. Wheeler? Just so you know, I've been working on, this is about a five-page opinion, and includes some discussion about that. You'll, you'll get that shortly if you can just hold on a little longer. Well, it's not just the overall big opinion. 
It's the fact that we passed as an I ordinance. I know. I have addressed that in the opinion. Oh, it's in the opinion. Yes. Okay, and does that affect I will tell through you the chair to if Ms. You can, if you can just wait for the opinion, I can give you that information. So that will be answered. It's all in there. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair. And was that Mr. Mace? I have to leave. Yeah, so Madam Chair. Um, the labor under thing. new under business, under the legislative I'm committee, um, as it relates to what I just heard on you those ordinances and adoptions and all of that stuff, I wait on the opinion, Ms. Wheeler, because I know that that, uh, that charter could be a little mess. But under legislation, Ms. Ms. Worthy, I'm not going to be the one to make the motion to adjourn it, but I'm going to say this. Each of these committees play a role. And I don't know how this council going to do it, but time crunch can't be the determining factor on us not doing our job. I don't care if a committee had to be on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever, but week after week, I can't and won't quietly be a part of postponing, postponing, and dealing with discussion items that could turn into some timely action. And that's what I'm saying, timely action. Because we let stuff set and get stale, and then it's ready to drop. That time period is over. So I'm one that, whether it's a Wednesday committee meeting, whether it's a Tuesday committee meeting, or a Thursday, if we can't take care of business of all four, or even in some cases five committees in one day, I'm seriously suggesting that we look at some alternative meeting schedules. But if we don't, get ready, because I'm steady making a record vote no. I'm steady making a record vote no. And I'm like a political cobra. When I keep voting no on postponement of discussion items, and then some come back and bite us, and we got caught off guard because we ain't been doing our work, I'm going to continue to bend and made a record. And I ain't shy about saying, what's what? That's my politics, that's my business. It ain't just politics, it's political business. I'm pissed about this registry somebody asked for, and it come to the finance chair. I'm looking at so many checks, and then move to adjourn. Don't, don't ask for this stuff, and then we can't get to some of it. I didn't ask for it. So my point is to continue to make points about what folks asking for, the volume of the work that we have to do, the seriousness of it. And Ms. Galloway, I like what um, you're saying when you can get with Mr. Newsom on a weekday. Come in with knowledge. I'm looking at knowledge trying to grow around this table. Most of my knowledge I gather from outside the meeting, and when I bring it in, I know what I'm talking about. I done did my homework with Ms. Brown and her construction company. I done talked to A.E. Conn. I done talked to folks. When I come in here, I'm usually knowing the answer and I'm ready. And it's blowing my mind that folks who in some cases might not do homework, they searching for the answer in here. And I'm trying to give them the answer and speed up the meeting. And so I'm going to keep sounding like a broken record when it comes to Councilman Mays because I do have a responsibility to take care of business. And it's a way to do it. It's a way to do it. I thought clearly we could pare down some of this stuff today, and um, now we had an adjournment already. Ms. Worth and your discussion items ain't even that volumes, but just routinely postpone, postpone, and then folks leave, postpone, ain't but seven, eight up, so I'm not going to support that motion on that short agenda. We should at least be discussing them and get them off of there. It is what it is.
I'm getting a little frustrated and I'm going to start making political and professional points because that's what the first ward residents want me to do, you think? You be watching, don't you? All right, thank you. Madam Chair, through you to the first ward resident. I apologize. Um, before, it's Monica, Guerra, and Winfrey, but I do have one I want to drop because we've already talked about it. 180434. Point of order. Mr. Mace. Were we on new business or we back up to him? No, it's new business, but I mean, if you allow me just to drop this while I have no have objection. It. <laughs> you know it's. I know it's, it's not I tried right to right do right. it and got blasted, but I don't okay. have no problem Thank you. going back up to it. Okay, um, Ms. Gallery? Um, I, I want to um, drop 170.4.3. Um, Janelle, you that one runs in? 70.446? Yeah, but yes, I, I, I want to say for the record. Point of order. Mr. Sure. I don't think there's nothing wrong with what y'all are doing. But you know we can postpone them, I'm sure we can drop them. Yes. Yeah, you can do whatever you choose to, oh, but I don't care if she deny point of order. I don't care if she deny or grant the point. I'm just saying be careful what you wish for on my agenda and then come back and do something else because I would have went all through these on my agenda and the new business. So be careful, but you deny the point of order. I just want to say, um, for the record, I don't have a problem doing work, but I, I, I think that what I'm learning for myself is some of the things that I have as discussion items are not discussion items that needs to probably happen in this setting. They're actually discussion items that I should probably be able to go to department heads and ask them the questions. And then if I have a consensus or I believe that my colleagues have spoke enough about something, then maybe it could be a group effort. And, and the reason why I say that is because if you look at some of the agenda items that are, or the items that are up for discussion, they're usually very specific people. And so we take up time that should be utilized to do city business, the resolutions that come before us, the ordinances that come before us, the first readings, and, and yet we're expected to spend lots of time on discussion items. I'm not talking about special orders, I'm talking about discussion items. Because I looked at something that had something from me from 2017 that I never did get, but I didn't want it to continue to be a discussion item that didn't need to tie up my colleagues because it wasn't a factor for them. It was a factor for me. And so I think in an effort to respect each other's time and not to act like you, you're, you're less of a council person serving your ward to have to be here till 11 o'clock on discussion items. Usually discussion items mean I didn't get information that I was looking for. But there's no resolution associated with it now, so it's something I can do my own homework on. And so as a, as a team of people to respect the time of each other and what we're doing for this community, we can do a better job at that. And so if you see my name on too many things, I'm going to, and I make a commitment to this council that I won't have discussion items on your agendas that I actually should be researching for myself because it affects me and my colleagues, not me and my constituents. Now, if I know that it benefits you all, I know that I can put it in your mailbox or whatever. Speaking to the 665 page document that Huey sent to us, I don't even know what to say. When I asked Huey about it, he said it was easy for him. He didn't know what we wanted. To me, it seems like a form of acting as though questions that are being asked are unreasonable. And so it, it seems like a mockery. And I said, and, and, and I'm passing it on because I said to Huey, Huey, I never would want you to send 665 pages. I'm sorry if you think that. And he said, actually, what you don't realize is that was easy for me. And so for somebody to, to print that out, come on, you guys. And so according to the charter, there is an expectation of financial things. 
And so what I guess what has to be defined is what that looks like without wasting anybody's time and or paper because the fact that someone in our office ran that all off and the reason why they will run that off is because because some people don't look at the spreadsheet that's sent to them because there's no reason to print that out especially with the fact that I'm sure respect I respect Councilman Mays, but Councilman Mays don't care about that 665 page document. He cares about showing that this is a waste of somebody's time and that someone would actually be asking for that. Point of information. Mr. Mays. Do you think it's proper for you to tell people how and what I think and who I am, like you just did, what I care about? Through Do you, you think Ms. That's Chair, to Mr. Mays, I'm simply saying what he just said. That's what you said, Councilman Mays. We don't need to go back and you forth. You said that I don't really care or do or something you about do, this. Don't take the floor. I'm asking that you say it. I'll wait for the floor. No. Um, and so, but my point is the request was a simple request that can be done weekly or bi-weekly. It doesn't have to go for all the months that that covers, one. And the charter says that certain information is to be provided. I guess I would ask my house. Mr. Meeks. Does done. we in finance committed me? No. Point of information. Or, oh, I have the floor. I have the floor. Councilman Mays, did you bring that up just now before you finished saying what you were saying? You were very adamant. But I'm just saying, if we're going to be fair, let's be fair. Okay. And you have so, like 30 seconds left. I'm done. Okay. And so, if you'll excuse me, I'm done. All right. Uh, Mr. Garris uh, uh, next. I make motion that we adjourn this meeting. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn, uh, and it's been seconded. Uh, there's no more. Discussion. No. So, all in favor of adjourning legislative, uh, <coughs> say aye. 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 Nays. Nay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six to one. Before we go into that meeting, I'm getting tired of folks taking shots at me and then adjourning the meetings. That's where the temperament with me changes. When somebody say something to me, Mr. Madam Chair, and to you, Mr. Garrett, Gera, let me respond on record. All these motions to adjourn when Fields and Galloway and them telling folks who I am, I'll tell people who I am. I said, Mr. Garrett, I'll tell people who I am All right, and what I'm about. All right, we're going to call the governmental meeting into order. Mr. Chair, I ask that 180513 be postponed to the next government office. Order without objection and uh, by a re uh, request from Ms. Fields, we requested that she also would like to have Ms. Jackson here next meeting to the administration. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, hold on one second. Mr. Mayne, we had Ms. Worthing first and then Mr. Mayne. So, um, wait, 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 if you were done, there's I'll a motion. Oh, oh, I thought you made a motion. Oh, I thought you made. Wait, for a special order, I think you. It was ordered without objection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Special order on discussion items. So now we're. Yeah, so there was no motion. Yeah. So it's just postponed because he says so. All right, Ms. Worthing, and then Mr. Mm -hmm. Mays, and then Mr. Griggs. Um, I move that mm. we uh, move. Resolution 180518 and 180519 to council. Mm. Mr. Chair, I support that. It's been moved probably second. Any discussion? Point of order. Mr. Mays, Yeah, Mr. Chair, the way that that was done without objection, the special order, and then jump right down the resolutions was unfair um, because there wasn't no discussion. It wasn't no motion. I'm sure it can be done without objection, but it took me out of the discussion because I had to wait in my line and didn't know we was on resolution. So pe people need to be careful because we all get to chime in on certain things. Now, if I'm, you got new point business. Point of information, Ms. Uh, Galloway. Councilman Mays did a point of order oh, that's and true. then began to take the floor. Your point was well taken, Mr. Mays. 
So there's a motion so on the floor. So there's a motion on the floor and it has been properly But we had discussion on the motion. So you did a point yeah. of order. We had so discussion on the motion. On motion. And so my okay. point was in the discussion it took me off of that. Whether it was a point of order, you recognized me to have the floor, right? Yeah. yeah. So just I mean, I didn't take the flow from nobody. Point yes. of information. Ms. Galloway. Did you give the floor or did Councilman make you a point of order? I recognize it's a point of order, but if you Thank take you. the floor, Mr. Mays, you can't have it. Yeah. Uh, did anybody else have the floor? No. Okay, so when I'm saying point of order, that stopped something and you then gave me the floor? Just because you said it procedurally. Yes. Okay, and so I still got a problem with that as it relates to Ordering without objection because it shut me out from chiming in, and that's what I was saying. I had some information from Sam Muma that I wanted the record to reflect with his request of being here. So the person who requested it, who's saying who they want here, they gone. I got an issue with that. Now, even though you could have ruled me out of order, I appreciate your indulgence. The motion on the resolutions. Um, the motion on the resolutions was to do what? Send them to where? Council. Send them to council. The one resolution that I had to get out on this investigative hearing, um, I'm ready to set dates and time. So we'll do it on the floor. But as far as the discussion on the motion, um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Wheeler. Ms. Wheeler. Pardon? Ms. Mays has a question. Ms. Wheeler, I'm trying to clear up something once and for all as it relates to the investigative hearing process <laughs> pursuant to the charter. Yeah. Do you have any understanding whether or not you can do an investigative hearing um, as a regular meeting, a special meeting, or a committee meeting? Do you have any clarification on that? Because I'm hearing things that I ain't agreeing with, and I want to try to see if we can clear that up one last time. Yeah, let me just find that really quickly. But I don't think there's a... That language is found, what, in the charter? Yes, yeah, in the charter. That's where yeah, I see it to be. That. Yeah, and... Um, it starts in 3 205 investigation. Can you repeat that number? Um, again? Starting with um, 3 205 uh, investigation, which the city council may make investigation into affairs of the city and the conduct of any city agency pursuant to 3 206. And 3 206 sets forth the um, investigative powers. And in sub A, it says the city council may subpoena witnesses, administer oaths and uh, take testimony and require the production of evidence in any matter uh, pending before it or any of its committees. So that's um, what it says as far as um, what your authority is for matters that are pending before it. It referring to council and committees referring to any of its committees. Right, any of its committees. So do, do you follow that, Mr. Garrett? Ms. Galloway seemed to not follow it. If I can help, would it help if you, she could look at your copy, Ms. Wheeler, because what it's saying is that the council has the power to do this in front of it or any of its committees, any other council's committees. And that's the language that was not just in the new charter. That's been the language in the charter for years. My position from what I heard in the discussion of a council meeting when I started doing this, or pushing for this hearing on finances and took the responsibility of financial chairman, it became clear to me, because it was said verbally by Ms. Fields, I don't really want, and I'm paraphrasing, Mays to chair this. She predicted how I'm going to do before it even happened, and then she referred to somebody else chairing something that I done did some work on. My position is this, when this go to council, I'm going to support moving it to council. And then I'm going to be trying to fill in the blanks on the floor in council. And I ask that this resolution be wrote this way for a certain reason. It should have been here in this form a month or so ago. But I heard somebody say how it's been done for 20 or 30 years. 
and that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. That's when I then said, bring me this resolution. This resolution, written resolution, should have been here a month or so ago. And Miss Miss um, Galloway, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Miss Galloway, that's why I refer to on the radio. I don't just be howling and talking about no investigative hearing. It's some obstacles and mechanics in the way to get resolutions in some cases. In this one, it should have been here, Maurice. Because I ordered and then asked it after we passed the vote. And so now it's finally here. Mr. Chairman, I'll be asking for support on my work. I'm going to be asking the chair this in a finance committee meeting, and I'm going to set a date certain within the week, starting with Mr. Newsom, who Mr. Newsom seems like he's going to cooperate. It won't take no subpoena. And he'll give us the people's name who he's interacting with at the state as it relates to the flow of money or the lack thereof. This had a specific scope dealing with the flow of money. Uh, Ms. Brown, some would argue, and if I'm chanted, I might give a little latitude. I know I will, but some will argue that the use of the hydro vac versus traditional excavation <coughs> could cause money to flow or not flow an additional 10 to 14 million dollars or more. And so that's going to be interesting. A little latitude. But um, I'm going to be asking for support on this from certain colleagues and um, I'll be voting to move it to the floor and hopefully Miss Winfrey Carter might be here because I know she had her mom had surgery or something today and I knew that she might not be here today. So I'll be supporting the motion to um, move it to the floor and I would um, just challenge. So you, just so you know, you're at five minutes for your first round. Is it already up? Yeah. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Right. So, anybody else like to speak on resolutions? Uh, hearing all this, it's amazing. I go back to you if you'd like another five minutes. Thank you, Bob. You would like another five minutes and go back to you? No, I, I think you only get five minutes <coughs> once, but you get to spoke twice. But I hope you didn't add Angela or mm -hmm. nobody else. No, in. I didn't. I apologize. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, and hearing all the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, it passes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, Ms. Ms. Worthing? I'd like to make a motion to postpone <coughs> our discussion items until next government office. <laughs> Ms. Galloway? I'll support that. And a motion to postpone discussion items and properly supported. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Mays. Governmental Ops is an important um, committee. I'll be voting not to postpone them. I don't think that we are perusing them enough. This five minute rule is killing me. I'm not going to go through and highlight your agenda items, even with my name on them, in the middle of this way of doing business. I'm not in the motion to um, suspend the rules to take care of business because it would take six and I just don't see the will of this council to do that. I'm not going to be crunching myself into a five minute period to run a multi-million dollar business. This is a hundred and sixty million dollar business and here we got clocks timing each other. I'm dying for you to change these rules. Uh, Mr. Davis, I don't think that first ward voted for me to be under these type of guidelines. Serious business we couldn't have postponed. I won't be voting to postpone. I don't like the opportunity to discuss it five minutes in between. I've got more than one thing here. I would like the main referrals as it relates to protest permits and people getting hit on Dort Highway, how we operate as a city and what we should demand ordinance-wise, operations-wise, and week after week after week, postpone, postpone. They ready to get the flow. Motion to postpone, motion to postpone. Get out of here, we've been here too long. Well, some people talk longer than others. I can assure you in finance committee it wasn't me because I was chairman. And I'm here to tell you, 
whatever you do and however you shake your head, Miss Galloway, I'm going to say this. Yeah, I looked at you. And so what I'm going to say, I just looked at you. So what I'm saying is this. I didn't appreciate hearing Councilman May's name. And so Councilman May's name was brought up as it relates to this and how I operate. If I want hard copies on some stuff, I'll get it. If I want emails on some stuff, I'll get it. And I don't appreciate people saying what I'm doing and what my strategy is, Ms. Galloway. And so don't do it. I'm in a good mood. I treat people nice. I try not to categorize or say something about folks. But every instance that I move and respond, somebody that said or took a shot or said something about me, that just ain't cool. And I don't like it. I don't like it from Ms. Fields, and I don't like it from you neither, Ms. Galloway, particularly as it related to this document that I said that was germane. New business. When I get quiet, somebody put a motion to postpone or adjourn, and I didn't get to bring that up. That's the extent that I said it when it was germane about the ending of a meeting and what I couldn't do in a committee. Now we're in another committee. I appreciate your time, and I was timing too. I'm not going to support this motion. From finance to governmental ops to legislative, postpone, postpone. We'll be in another year, and some of this stuff has been on here for two years. I am appalled. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Is there anybody else that would like to discuss anything? Um, hearing none, I would like to just remind Ms. Wheeler. I'm uh, discussing item. Ms. Wheeler? Yes. <laughs> I'm discussing item 180236. I just want to know if you just kind of could let me know personally or email me on that one. That's 180236. Ms. Uh, Galloway? Um, I'm on page 7. Oh, oh, 180236. On uh, page 7, yeah. I'd like to um, drop 180086. 180086. Uh, that's dropped without objection. Um, I just want to um, say for the record for my constituents, um, 180005 investigation. Um, I got quite a few calls this weekend about a piece of the rock. And so I was told by um, inspection that they are working with somebody, Ms. Wheeler, in the law department. Um, because they're still not up to code and shouldn't be operating. And my seniors are saying they're having parties. They've had parties the last three weekends. And people are saying that they're working with legal? Mike Ryder. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he is. okay, it's perfect. Early. Perfect. I'm just trying to figure out, okay. Oh, um, he does have a licensing issue, you know, and that's. Well, he yeah. said we're working on with the legal department on this specific one. So. Wall Street Rock. Is that up? Anybody else like to discuss? Mr. Chairman, how many seconds a minute I got? You, know? you were at, I want to say, 328. Okay, this should be, if you recognize it, Mr. 344. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm glad so many people have pulled out their watches <laughs> all of a sudden but didn't have them out before I had mine. This shouldn't take but a minute. I have no problem with people making referrals and ordering stuff, particularly if they stay and do the work. Even if they do the work and come in prepared and don't stay. But I looked at these agendas and I'm knowing who doing referrals, who ordering stuff, and I don't mind people ordering it. Sometimes I tell them, don't even put stuff in my box. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, through Janelle. Um, Janelle, you does a lot of my email stuff. A lot of stuff, I don't even revert to hard copy. Would that be a fair statement? And so, I don't like people singling me out when I want a hard copy in front of the media, in front of the public, talking about Councilman Mays and what and this. and I don't play games. I wanted this one in hard copy. 
I wanted this one in hard copy. I wouldn't care if it's 600 pages. Maybe your phone is better than mine. Maybe you use a laptop and I don't. <coughs> Whatever the reasons I do what I do, don't single me out, not in a public meeting, not to make a point, because that's where people get off on the wrong political foot. It's a way to make points, but not at my expense. Whenever that happens, it's some issues. Because when I start saying names and making points, people in an uproar. Oh, don't say my name. He can't say names. He got order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Somebody with uh, Mr. Galloway? I was going to say, I'm, um, I make a motion to. Do we already motion? We all motion. We're on a 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 motion. we business done. Uh, and this may interfere with, with some of my colleagues' time, but if we're if we're having and we are having uh, committee meetings before, which set up the council meeting, then why not start committee meetings at nine o'clock in the morning? Because we do we well you look we beat stuff to death. And there is no way that we can come in, regardless of how short our agenda is. We have a tendency to hang in here. That's correct. And so I'm saying, if we can come in at 9 o'clock, maybe recess at 12 and come back around 1, I'm willing to do that. And, and I, I work. I do another job. But the time it seems like that we have, because we come in here at 5 o'clock and we don't get done with the finance committee. And again, you're right. It wasn't you. Sure. And we don't get done at 5 o'clock to, uh, to finance committee until three, 3 hours later. And I realize that we got a lot of work. So I'm, I'm saying as an alternative, so that we can spend the right amount of time that we need, since we need so much time to do work, let's look at on, on, on uh, Wednesdays that we're supposed to have committee meetings. Let's do it at 9 o'clock. Have a reset at 12, come back at 1. And stay here if you want to stay here until 10 o'clock the same night, okay, fine. But at least we can start doing this early. That's just a suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Griggs? Well, I recommended before, and I, I don't see why we don't. Just treat this as a homework. If your name's on these discussion items, go through it before the next meeting and determine what you want to do with it whether you want to postpone it or what, whatever you want to do. But there's no need making all of us, you know, put up with 12 hours, <laughs> is, what you're, is what you're proposed. That's yeah, it is. And, and uh, I, I don't, that's, that's, not that's I just not right. And it's not right for the city. It makes, it makes us get more dull. We're going to have to think sharply, take it home, do your homework, get rid or keep these items. I, you know, what do you want me to do? You want me to make a motion to recommend that? <laughs> yeah, I think people missing the point on why I put discussion items. Everybody's discussion item ain't a referral, it ain't a request for information. It's just that a discussion item in front of the council who can make law and make decisions and change policy. A lot of reasons, that's why I put stuff as a discussion item. Not that I can get with legal or get with a department and then resolve it. It ain't for me, it's for the public good and for the good of the council. I can point out a number of discussion items that I'm trying to turn into legislation or action. It does me no good as an individual without the council body. So, all discussion items, respectfully, Mr. Briggs, or anybody else, and I'm not just picking at you on what you said, Mr. Briggs, that ain't the purpose of why I got some on there. I'm actually trying to change policy, the way government operates for the better, legislation, and I can't do that as one. I don't have five votes. I only have one. 
And so that's why I put stuff on the discussion. When I put Miss Brown on there and ask AECOM and Goyette and folks to come, it's because the season going to end mid-end November. And here she been sitting out on a $2 million contract. You let me get a $2 million contract, Eric Mays, Flint, Michigan. I'm happy as a lot. A $2 million contract, I wouldn't care if I didn't make a profit of 10%. I ain't never made $200,000 in my life. I got it 176 before. I think that was my taxes would show 2 06, 207. I was up there. Three digits. 176,000. Got audited and was standing. So my reason for um my reason for putting stuff on discussion ain't for me to go home and do homework. And then get some of them might can be cleared up that way, but that ain't really the push why I leave stuff on there. And if you look at what I'm doing and what's on there, I'm trying to change the way government operates for the better, enact ordinances, take care of financial matters in a timely manner. Once the timing passed, then I drop some of it. So it's a myth what I'm hearing about these discussion items when it comes to my rationale. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President. And then just briefly. But, uh, uh, through you to Mr. Griggs, I was not suggesting that we take 12 hours because I really don't think it takes us 12 hours to get through this. Yeah, but the discussion, yeah, finish, please. Well, please. Well, I, May I finish, please? Okay. My discussion, the discussion items are not what hold us up. It's, and I realize that what I try to do, and council people, my colleagues don't have to do what I do, but I try to get my stuff over the weekend where I go. If there are some questions that I have, I call the department heads. I call the people who put this stuff on here and get my stuff, get my answers. So I'm similarly like you, Councilman Mays. When I come here, I got an idea on what's shaking, and if I need some clarifications, we can get them. But I just said, I think that since it takes us so much time to get through four committees, why not start earlier? That's all I'm saying. We don't have to be here 12 hours. I, again, I don't think it takes time. I don't think it takes 12 hours to do this. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman. Oh, all right, Ms. Galloway and then Mr. Mays. Oh, no. Ms. Mays. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, real quick. Use the Finance Committee as a um, model or as an example. <laughs> I've heard for four years that I'm the one who holds up me. I don't think I really prolonged the Finance Committee as a chair. And I ain't saying nobody who talked did nothing wrong because I kept the clock going. That ain't the point. The point is it just takes time. I'm not opposed to a schedule change. I don't care who's been meeting at 5 o'clock on a Wednesday for 30 and 20 years. This is 2018. We're in the middle of an emergency, some would say. So I don't just do things the status quo. Anything we can explore to get stuff done, and I don't mind folks speaking. I ain't even in agreement of the five-minute rule. But I know what's going on and who's who and what's what, and I know who the scapegoats that's being used or the scapegoat. And I'm not going to continue to be a scapegoat. I'm a leader out to take care of business for the residents in the city. Some might not want to stay 12 hours, but I'll stay 10. I'll stay 8. But my point is, Mr. Winfrey and Chairman of Governmental Operations, I take it just for what it is. Sometimes you have to operate effectively and sometimes differently. Thank you. Thank you. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I have so moved. Yes. Mr. Chair, I second that motion. Okay, there's a motion to adjourn on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Passes 5 to 1. This is adjourned. I'd like to call Grant's committee meeting to, to order. Yes. So, uh, Mr. President. We certainly have uh, Councilwoman Jerry and Carter and her friends. Her mother had surgery uh, today. Our uh, roll call is all.
already been established. There are no red of resolutions. And the only thing that we have is outstanding discussion items. Please, the Point of information. President. You say roll call had been established, but I'm told that we get an absent of president for each um, committee meeting. Well, I keep track. Okay. I keep track. So it's, it's established in one meeting, but it changes from meeting to meeting. You are so correct, sir. Not so, I just asked. No, listen. Councilwoman. Um, I, 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 I'm glad that Councilman Mays brought that up because there's there's this consistency of saying how many absences that someone has, mm -hmm. and it sounds like it's so much. But I can say for some of us, there's been frustration in one meeting, and you walk out, and other meetings have happened. So when people hear 13 absences, they need to understand that there is the possibility to have three absences on this day. Four. So four. four, right. But it doesn't mean that somebody was, you know what I mean? If you hear 13, you could think that's a lot of meetings when technically somebody might have missed a couple of committee meetings and been absent eight times in that. And so just want to make sure that the residents know. And, and so when you hear that, know that sometimes now that we know that that's how our absences are being tracked, then, then, then we know. But on your job, if you work a job, usually if you're absent in like three days in a row, it's considered one occurrence, not just the days. But it depends on where you work. So it helps to know how the rules are being applied so that you can make sure that you are operating within the rules. Because I didn't know that until Davina shared with me when that FOIA was requested how the absences were tallied. That wasn't discussed. It was just thrown out the number. So I think that's that's a huge point to know. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Council, Councilman McGarry and then Councilman Britt. Any motion we postpone? There's a motion on the floor that we postpone. I'll second discussion now. There has been a second. Uh, any discussion on that? But I would just say this, since it looks like this motion going to pass, I'm not going to support it, just as I've not supported the others. I don't go with that practice. But I would use my time, and I would tell uh, after accordingly. When, however you calculate absences, it's good to have zero like Mr. Davis had from November to June. I don't mind a man with zero absences, sir, and I hope you don't mind me putting my hand on your shoulder. I don't mind having two, however you calculate. I'd have rather have zero. So it is what it is, however you calculate them, you miss me, whether it's 13 or 35. She used the word 13. I'm using the word Z, the word zero and two. I don't know how many folk have. All I know is that I'm going to discuss it in a certain context. When I seen two, I hit the ceiling. Because I didn't know I had missed none from November to June. When I seen zero, I was a little jealous, sir. But when I seen two, I say I can live with that jealousy and envy. So however we calculate it, everybody is treated the same. And all committees are important. Grants is important. I won't be voting to postpone these. I, I usually ain't going to go to sleep after the 11 o'clock news when I'm at home anyway. I'm like a couch potato, so what the hell I'm going to run to get out of here for and I've been voted to do the city business. I usually don't go to sleep at 12, 1 o'clock, but I watch it that 11 o'clock news. So it ain't for 10, 20. And I ain't got to watch the news every day because I got Comcast pay arm and a leg to record it. So I'll be voting no, and I'm not going to use these late hours as a... Um, excuse to get out of here because I'm willing to bet all these grown folks sitting around this table don't be asleep at 10 or 11, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It sounds good, but I bet you, you 
put the, uh, the detective on their house. They ain't sleep at 9, 10, 11, but when they come here, ah, uh, 9, 10, 11, we got to get out of here. Not me. I'm voting no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anybody else? Any other discussion? Yeah, I wanna, do I get my second round? I sound like Regis Philbin sometimes, don't I? How I do that on purpose? No! Is it a question? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you want to answer? Do I sound like Regis Philbin? <coughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of adjourning this meeting, please sing about myself. Postponing. Postponing. Postponing what? Oh, postponing. The, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. I usually go to bed at time. Uh, those, those, uh, all in favor of postponing the discussion items to the next grants committee, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the same side. No! Uh, which brings us to new business. Mr. Chair. Councilman. Make a motion that we adjourn. There's a motion on the floor that we adjourn the grants committee. I'll second. There is a second by Mr. Griggs. All in favor of adjourning this grants committee meeting, please signify by saying aye. 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 No! <laughs> <laughs> Same side.